All right, the court is calling 2020 CR 7353 State of Texas versus Wardale Lemon. Could I have parties announced for the record for the state? For the defense? And are you Mr. Lemon? All right, the court has a motion in limine. State, have you had a chance to review the motion in limine? We have, Your Honor. State? We have no objections. All right, so if you all will make sure that you approach. And then the next thing we are taking up is the outcry witness. Is that correct? That's yes. correct. All right, and who would that be? All right, if you'll take the stand here, please. All right, thank you. Can you raise your right hand? Do you solemnly swear or affirm the testimony you give will be the truth and nothing but the truth? So help you, God? Yes, ma'am. All right, you can lower your hand. Make sure you keep your voice up so the court reporter can hear. Will you state your name for the record and please spell it? Linda Kenny, that's L-Y-N-D-A, and then Kenny K-E-E-N-E-Y. All right, state. Okay, uh, Ms. Kenny, how do you know uh, the uh, complainant in this case, Madison Kenny? She's my stepdaughter. Okay, and uh, in what year did you... Um, Meet Madison. Um, it was 2013. And is that when you started uh, dating her father? Yes, that's when I started dating her father. Do you have children of your own? Yes, ma'am. How many children do you have? Uh, four. Oh, wow. Um, were you um, with Madison Keeney um, in 2019? Yes, ma'am. Uh, were you married to her father at that time? Yes, ma'am. Um, can you please tell the court um, what Madison told you um, that ultimately led to the case we have today against Bordeaux Lemon? Yes, ma'am. Um, Madison, I was taking her and my daughter at the time. I can't I remember how old they both were, but they were elementary school age. We were going to Target and we were driving, just kind of laughing with the girls. They were kind of going through that phase where they thought little boys were cute at school. Um, my daughter was talking about a boy like, oh, he's so cute, you know, making little comments. We were just kind of laughing. And Madison made the remark that, oh, my daddy's going to be kind of strict about when I'm dating. And I said, no, daddy just wants you to date someone good from a good family, you know, that comes from a good background when you get older. And then she mentioned, she said, my mommy's boyfriend is creepy. And I said, oh, well, you know, maybe, you know, just kind of, you know, kind of not trying to get anything out of her or say anything. And then she said, I want to tell you something. And I said, sure, you can tell me anything. And she said, promise me you can't tell my daddy. She begged me, I would say for a good five minutes, not to tell her dad. And I told her that if somebody hurt her, I couldn't keep it from her father. I would have to tell him. And this all happened by this time we're in the Target parking lot. And that's when she explained to me that Wardell would tell her about rubbing her tummy that he explained it as rubbing her tummy and he put his hands in her pants and with his fingers in her vagina. And she started crying. I immediately started crying. We didn't go inside the store. We went home. And um, when I walked inside the house, I told my husband and we called the cops immediately. Okay. Now, when she told you um, that he would touch her vagina, did she say... Um, it happened on a specific day. Um, no, she didn't give me like days or anything of that sort. Um, I didn't want to pull, you know, I can't imagine. Um, so I didn't question her um, after she did say that. And we called the cops. She 
with time did say other little details um, when she felt comfortable. Just she would just say sometimes she would hide from him when she was over at her mother's because she didn't want it to happen. Okay. Um, did she articulate whether there was any, any penetration? No, she never said that to me. Um, I never tried to push or question. Um, did she say where on her vagina he would touch? Um, (laughs) she would say like inside, you know, she was a little child at the time. Okay. Um, to your knowledge, um, had she told any other adults before this? No. I'll pass the witness, Ryan. Mr. Mr. Pedro? Yes, thank you. <clears throat> Good morning, Ms. Keene. Hi. I'm Leo Gonzalez. I, I represent Mar- uh, Wardell Lemon. I just have a few questions about the outcry, okay? Okay. If you don't understand something that I'm asking you, please ask me to repeat the question. Okay. And um, if you're unclear, I, if, you, if you're not sure the answer, it's okay to say I don't understand, okay? Okay. So um, just um, briefly, it was uh, your daughter... Your your biological daughter yeah. and and Madison in the uh, in the car with you. Yes, sir. Okay, and you said that. Uh, I'm sorry. What was your uh, your other daughter's name? Her name is Addison. Okay, and how old was Addison at the time? Uh, honestly, I, I I cannot remember how old she was. They were in elementary school at the time. And you remember this to be what time? Uh, I guess when? What year was this that this outcry came out? Uh, she was in elementary school, about fourth grade, go somewhere around there. But do you remember the year? No, I do not. Okay. Would it surprise you if it was would it reported in 2019? Definitely wasn't in 2019. It was not in 2019. No. So um, when, what year do you think that was then? Um, ooh. We lived in Houston at the time. I mean, I can't remember the Pacific year to be honest we lived over there for about three or four years okay and so um the same day that you received the outcry is the day that you reported to police yes okay now if i understand you correctly um both children were in elementary school yes okay how old is i guess what's what's madison's birthday uh june 18th of 07 07 so in if 2019, she would be 12, um, depending on the type of time of year, she could be 11 or 12. In 2019? Mm-hmm. I mean, I don't know off the top of my head. I mean, but you, you can do a little bit of math, right? 2019, 2012. 2019, she was... 20, 2007. 2007, she was born. Okay. Okay. Um, just... A couple other questions. Do you remember uh, speaking to the police about what Madison had told you about? Yes. Okay. And you talked about it here today that uh, she told you what exactly? She described that he would tell her that it was belly rubs and he'd put his hands in her pants. Okay. That he would tell her it was belly rubs? Yes. Now, do you remember telling the police that uh, initially that she told you that he would began rubbing her stomach? Yes. Okay. And that you, they asked you if intercourse or penetration occurred, if you had asked Madison about that. Do you remember that? I do, but she never said that. Let me wait for my next question. Okay. One second. Um, She never responded in a yes or no fashion. She was never asked that question. Did you ever ask that question to her? No. Okay. Do you recall telling the police that you asked her that question? I never told the police I asked that question. And I have no further questions. All right. Any other questions? Uh, Just to clarify one thing. Um, When he was asking you the date, um, not when it happened to her, but when she told you. Do I remember the date? Generally, the, the year. No. Okay. Would it surprise you that police were involved on September 14th of 2019? Yes, it would surprise me. 
Why do you think it wasn't 2019? Because I remember she was a little child and I know that we went to downtown Houston to do the interview. And at this time she was already in middle school. Okay. She was going to Anthony middle school in Houston. Okay. Um, And how old is she today? She just turned 16. Okay. So was there a, a lag between when you told police and when they you went downtown? Yes. How how long? Um I I can't remember, but it was a, it was a long time. Okay. All right, no, no further questions. All right, anything else? No, you aren't. All right, does anyone want to invoke the rule? Yes, you are. All right. The rule has invoke the rule. All right. The rule has been invoked. What that means is you can't discuss your testimony with anyone. The only person you're allowed to speak to are attorneys for the state of the defense. Do you understand? Yes, ma'am. All right. Thank you. You may step down. <laughs> all right. I hope you all were able to find decent parking. I'm sorry we're running a little bit late. One of the hearings I had this morning ran over, but that hearing had nothing to do with this case. You all may see people coming in from these doors, if somebody comes in from that door, it's because they didn't read the sign on the door that says we're in jury trial. So they'll look bashful. If you see someone coming in through this door, it's other cases that I work with. Sometimes people will come to have documents for me to sign, but ignore that. It has absolutely nothing to do with this case. Does everyone understand? All right. If you all could raise your right hand for me, please. Do you and each of you solemnly swear or affirm in the case of the state of Texas against Wardell Lemon, you will a true verdict render according to the law and the evidence? So help you, God. Yes. All right. You can lower your hand. State, are you prepared with opening statement? I'm sorry. Prepared to read the indictment? Yes, Ron. Thank you. In the name and by authority of the state of Texas, the grand jury of Bear County, state of Texas, duly organized, impaneled, and sworn as such, at the July term AD 2020 of the 379th Judicial District Court of said county in said court at said term, do present in and to said court that in the county and state aforesaid and interior to the presentment of this indictment on or about the first day of January 2015, Wardell Lemon, here and after referred to as defendant, did intentionally and knowingly engage in sexual contact with Madison Keeney a female child younger than 17 years by touching part of the genitals of Madison Keeney with the intent to arouse or gratify the sexual desire of any person against the peace and dignity of the state signed the foreman of the grand jury. All right. How do you plead to that? Not guilty. All right. You may be seated. State, are you ready with opening statements? Yes, Your Honor. You may proceed. Good morning. Um, Madison Keeney. Okay, it's a 16-year-old girl. But you'll hear from her. She's been damaged. Her mom, the biological mother, does not have her. It has been in her life for a long time. Father has had full custody of her since she was three years old. 2014. 2015, she would go and visit her mother on weekends. They were living here in their home, both mom and dad. Mother stating for the love. You'll hear from Madison that she would not with Wardell and Lauren and over many, many months, many years, we gradually groomed her. Still my life. In her belly. Gradually moving his hand down, further and down. So it culminated in an incident that Madison recalls. Where he put his hand all the way down to where baby was. Is not and we talked about jury selection, those of you who knew people who waited a long time. Um, well, Madison waited a long time. She did. So she was 12 years old. 
and it was in a what started out as a recent conversation with her stepsister and her new stepmom, a boy's grade, and she had a connection to her stepmom. I don't have to tell you something. But you have to promise up. And one of them. And that's when she told Linda. Yeah. When she was, quite frankly, too young to understand. So by this point, Madison and her family had moved to Houston. So the investigation was done in Houston. He's First, you see that. Well, since it happened here, we went to sit here. We had the detective, Tipper O'Brien, who got everything together, submitted it to our office. We talked a lot about uh, one witness. Well, unfortunately, that is what we And unfortunately, there were no people who saw it. Because Mr. Lennon. When we talked about what we look for in credibility, emotion, body language, you'll see that in time. And at the end of the trial, we'll ask the defendant. Defense? Yes, Your Honor. May I proceed? Yes. Please court. So yesterday during the selection, obviously couldn't get into any of the details what we expect to hear come from the witness today. So now we're going to tell you basically what we expect to come from this witness and how we expect this evidence to play out. Because it is a adverse adversarial system that we have. Clearly, there are going to be things that we disagree on. Okay. What I can tell you right now is that we disagree on much of what the state has proven so far. This is going to be a case that we believe involves some questionable motives, some inconsistent allegations, and even an investigation that fell pretty short. Yes, you're going to hear about the investigation that was done in Houston that was pretty cookie cutter. Let's stamp it move along. I do anything else to look at that. Let somebody else figure it out. Ultimately, somebody pass it along for you to figure it out without doing any kind of scrutiny as to how and why the allocations came. You're going to hear that Mr. Levin began dating Amanda Lewis, who is Madison's biological mother. And you're going to hear that until that time, Justin. He, father of Madison, still had a relationship with Amanda. Not necessarily a romantic one, they still got along. But when that dating relationship started, everything changed. He did not like Wardell. You're going to hear how much he did not like Wardell. You're also going to hear that after that breakup, or after that relationship changed because of the new dating, because the new boyfriend, he would get pretty upset with Amanda. Okay? And you're going to hear that Amanda did upgrade Madison as an infant, worked as a waitress. At a certain point, though, he was able to better support her. So even though they didn't have a real custody in place, they kind of worked it out back and forth with each other. At some point, he begins, Justin begins falling for custody of Madison. She agrees to the custody arrangement. She doesn't have one for a lawyer, so she agrees to the arrangement that's put in paper and regarding child support. At that point, Justin moves to Houston. You can hear that that is actually in violation of their own agreement that they had at that point. Okay? But Having any money, not having access to the legal aid, doesn't do anything about it. It's okay, we take care of it, we'll fine. Take care of Madison. I understand. As long as she gets to come back and see me, no problem. So that continues. You're going to see that there's a relationship that happens between Madison and Wardell. 
loving relationship, one where they have fun together, they go play games together as a family, they go hang out at arcades. She becomes the first fan, even though her her biological dad is a Lakers fan. And if you know Spurs and Lakers, that's a big deal. You're also going to hear that shortly before these allegations came out in July of 2019, a modification was filed by Justin in regards to a man modifying and enforce child support. You're going to hear that in September of that year, she was served. And then hear that eight days later, when we got tried or the report was made to Harris County Red Cross. I want you to think about what we talk about in jury selection when you hear the evidence about this, about how those things can affect our adults, the ability of children, and put children in positions that make them uncomfortable. You're going to hear that as much as a relationship that Madison Wardell had. Justin Elbent making sure Amanda paid for dating somebody else. And that motivation has driven much of this case. I want you to look at all the evidence through that line, ladies and gentlemen, because it's important to consider it not just as somebody said this, and so we're just going to be. There's many things in just that. I want you to think about the investigation that you're going to hear about. How much more you wish would have been done? We believe that you're going to hear a lot of inconsistency. And you're going to hear that there are reasons that sometimes there are inconsistency in what people say. But I want you to think about specifically about those inconsistencies and how different they are and how they're being changed to try to affect it. When the end of evidence comes, we believe you're going to find my client, Wardell Lemon, not guilty of his own evidence. All right. State, call your first witness. Your Honor, the state calls Justin Keeney. All right. Can you raise your right hand? Yes. Do you solemnly swear or affirm the testimony you give will be the truth and nothing but the truth? So help you help you, God. Yes, I do. All right, you can have a seat. Adjust the microphone as needed. Make sure you keep your voice up so that the court reporter can hear and the jurors can hear. If you'll state your name for the record and spell it, please. Justin Keeney, J U S T I N K E E N E Y. State. Mr. Keeney, um, how are you related to Madison? I'm her father. And when was Madison born? She was born in 2007. Um, how old is she today? She's uh, 16. Who is Madison's mother? M her mother is Amanda Lewis. Okay. And um, were you uh, married to Amanda? No. Um, did you live with Amanda? We did live together. Um, how long did you live together while um, with Madison? Uh, for about three years, three and a half years. Okay. Um, were you living here in Bear County? Yes. Um, after Madison turned three and you separated from Amanda, was there a custody arrangement that was made? Yes, I took full custody of her. Uh, she signed over her rights to me. Were there any um, adversarial hearings about custody? No, uh, was, we met with a lawyer. I hired a lawyer. She signed over agreement, and it was pretty simple. There was no fight whatsoever. Um. So um, you had an order for full custody? Yes, that's correct. And when was that granted? Um, probably when she was four, right after that, um, shortly after. So I would say some, somewhere around 2011. Okay. Um, um, 
did uh, Madison ever see her mom after you were awarded full custody? She did see her every other weekend. And how long did that arrangement go on? Um, it lasted for, I would say, about five years, four or five years. Okay. So from the age she was, um, you said maybe um, early four, late three yeah. years old? Yeah. Sure. Um, Till she was roughly what nine or ten? Yeah, around ten or eleven. Okay. Um, and um, where was Amanda residing during this time? Uh, with her boyfriend, I guess. Uh, the gentleman right there. Uh, they were in Bear County as well. Okay. Um, and uh, what was her boyfriend's name? Wardell. What was his last name? Lemon, or as they called him, Buddy. Okay. So, which was weird. And um, can you identify Mr. Lemon? You indicated he is here. Can you identify He's right him? right there in the white shirt. Uh, what color tie is he wearing? Uh, I don't know. It looks a multi-color rainbow tie. Mm-hmm. I'm not sure. Okay. But I'll let the record reflect she has ident- he has identified the defendant, Ward Lemon. Okay. Um, what kind of home did they live in? I believe it was a duplex. Um, would Madison have her own room? Uh, from what I understand, I think she did, yes. Did Madison, um, did you have any concerns about Madison going over there on the weekends? I did. Um, she used to come back smelling like smoke. Uh, she was sick all the time when she would come back. Uh, there's various reasons. You could just tell that that wasn't a good environment for her to be in. I voiced my concern to her mother um, and also, um, you know, to my lawyer. And there's not much you, I could do outside of that. Um, but, yeah, that was it, it was very noticeable. And I, it was hard to send her over there uh, knowing that, not trusting. But, you know, that was her mother. So we hope for the best. And so um, when did the, the you said they went on for four or five years? Was there. Um, something significant that happened that caused the visitations to stop? Uh, well, we moved to Cyprus, which uh, was in our allocated distance. Um, I moved for work and um, she just stopped kind of wanting to see her. We still made an effort. I think one time we let her stay for spring break with her. And then we found out she was being watched by random people um, that we had never met before. Uh, so that was kind of a, you know, a telltale sign. Like that was not a good thing for her. Uh, after that, we still made an effort for her mother to come out to Cyprus where we lived uh, to even stay with us. My wife made an effort so that she could see her daughter. We never tried to uh, not have her mother in her life. So just always one of the best circumstances for her to be there. Um, now, um, in 2019, where were you living? In 2019, I was living in Cyprus. Okay. And... Um, Without going into what it was, was there an event in 2019 that caused you to uh, file additional uh, custody motions? Uh, In 2019, when we found out what happened, uh, my daughter came forward and had stated, obviously, why we're here today. Um, That's when I even reached out to her mother, informing her of what happened in, in hopes that she would, you know, maybe do the right thing. Um, she did not believe Madison for one bit and kind of protected uh, Mr. Wardell over there. And uh, it, it just, it, it, it wasn't a good thing. And that's when we stopped kind of, you know, attempting to let her see Madison, um, obviously, for that reason. Um, you know, may I approach the witness? Yes. I'm handing you... I'm giving you a exhibit number one. Yes. What is that? That's my daughter. That's your daughter, uh, Madison? Yes. How old is she in this picture? She is uh, 10 or 11 years old. And so she was uh, born in 2007? 2000. Then... Yes, 2015. Okay. okay. So she was like maybe eight. Oh, I'm sorry, eight. Yes. Yeah. Sorry. Um, Just a little... And is this a fair and accurate depiction of her age in 2015? Yes, it is. And um, what's how she holding? She's holding uh, American girl doll. Yeah. I, uh, Your Honor, at this point, I'd offer a state's exhibit number one. No, no objection, Your Honor. All right, state's exhibit number one is admitted without objection.
Yes. <clears throat> you said Madison is 16 years old. Uh, what grade is she in right now? Uh, she will be a junior. Okay. That's and good. is she doing well in school? Yeah, she's in all AP classes, A's and B's. She runs track and cross country. She's a very good kid. Um, I'll pass the witness. Defense. May I proceed, Ron? Yes. Thank you. Good morning, Mr. Keeney. How are you doing? I've uh, been better. I'm Leo Gonzalez. I represent Mr. Wardell Lemon. I have a few questions for you, okay? Okay. Uh, if you don't understand the question that I'm asking, please ask me to repeat it so I can maybe be use better words to explain myself, okay? Understood. Thank you, sir. Um, now, sir, you currently live in Cypress, is that correct? Uh, no, not currently. Um, so where do you live now? I live in Shirts. Shirts. So you moved back here to the San Antonio area? Yeah, we moved back about two years ago. So in 2021? Roughly, yes. Okay. Um, let me ask this. Um, what kind of work are you in? I'm in sales. What kind of sales? Optical medical sales. Okay. And when you moved to uh, Cyprus, were you still in that type of work? Yes, that's the reason for me moving there. Okay. And uh, what was the reason for moving back? Uh, my mother-in-law almost died from COVID. So, and we had a baby, so we wanted to be closer to her and we moved back. I currently still go to Houston and travel for her. Okay, so your work is based out of Houston? Yes. And so you travel over there? Mm -hmm. Okay, is that correct? Is that yes? Yes. Okay, so make sure the court reporter can't do uh huh, uh huh. Okay. Yes, ma'am. Now, um, you said you and Amanda lived together for a few years? Yes. Okay. Um, and how did you and Amanda meet? Uh, we met during work uh, prior to that. So when we were, well, I was younger, maybe uh, around 20, 21. Okay. And um, prior to having Madison, did y'all live, together, live together? Yes, we did. Okay. So, um, and you said after a couple of years, um, your relationship ended. What caused your relationship to end? Uh, we were not going in the same life direction. Uh, her mother was just not a good person, and I didn't want to be around that. So okay. if you want to, I get into more detail. Well, you you characterize as not a good person. Is that correct? Well, yeah, she was doing drugs. She was just, well, I'm not asking you what you did. You just, that's what your words are, correct? Correct. Okay. Um, you, um, you really want this jury to know how bad of a person she was? I'm just stating why we broke up. You asked that question. Okay. Um, and so at that point, you said you met with a lawyer? Yes, I did. Now, had you already broken up at this point? Yes, we did. And how long after the breakup did you, um, I guess, meet with a lawyer and then file paperwork on um, regarding Madison? Within a couple of months. Okay. Um, when did you first meet Wardell Lemon? Uh, we first met through her mother. I didn't really meet him. I was a friend of hers. Um, I think they're she was buying drugs from him. Your Honor, uh, please instruct a witness to only answer the question and object to non-responsive. All right, that'll be sustained. You need to listen to the question and answer the question. Do you understand? Yes. If you try to add things that are not asked of you, then there's a chance that your test, your entire testimony will be stricken from the record. Do you understand? I understand. And I ask that the last comment be stricken from the record, Your Honor. All right. And would you like the jury to be instructed to disregard? I would, Your Honor. Ladies and gentlemen, you are to disregard that last answer. That answer was not in response to the question that was asked. Does everyone understand? So that means you're not to consider at all. It is like it was never said. All right. You may continue. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, were you aware that they were dating prior to filing the paperwork? Yes, I was. Okay. Did her relationship with Wardell bother you? No, it did not. Okay. 
May I approach the witness, Your Honor? Yes. Thank you, Mr. Marcus. Defendant's exhibit number one. Do you recognize that, sir? You can look through it and see if anything comes Yeah, I, I recognize this. Okay, what is that? That is our court order. Court order. Or custody. Yeah. It's the, the, the order that was filed? Yes. Okay, look through it some more. I just want to make sure it's a true and accurate copy of the order that you have, correct? It looks to be. You want to just make sure it's correct? It looks to, it looks to be correct. Doesn't appear to be altered in any way? Um, is there something that I should be looking at? No, I'm just asking if you will look through it and if it's. Can you just look through it? Sure, I'm sorry. Um, if you go ahead and look through it, I just want to make sure that it's true and correct. That's all. Looks correct. All right, offering evidence at the end of the one at this time, the tenor's counsel. Mm -hmm. All right, any objections? Uh, no objection. All right, defense exhibit number one is admitted without objection. May I approach the witness again, Your Honor? Yes. Thank you. your attention to page two here um you know the bottom when it references joint management conservative what did it say there? the court find, the court finds that the following orders are in the best interest of the child is ordered that Justin King and Mary Lewis are excuse me uh if you can slow down the court reporter has to take everything right. that's being said you may continue it is ordered that Justin Keeney and Amanda Lewis are appointed joint managing conservatives of the following child, Madison Keeney. It is ordered that at all times Justin Keeney is a parent joint managing conservator, shall have the following rights, the right to receive information from any other conservator of the child concerning the health, education, and welfare of the child, the right to confer with the other parent to the extent possible before making a decision concerning the health, education, and welfare of the child, the right of access to medical, dental, psychological, and educational records of the child. And just the next paragraph references to. If I can have a running uh, allowance to approach the witness. Yes. And what's the next paragraph reference? Which the, it goes all the way down. Right. And so then as the next paragraph, this is all rights that you have as a conservator, correct? Correct. Does it mention that as in regards to Amanda as well? Uh, it does. Now, can you read on the bottom of page six regarding uh, exclusive right to designate that paragraph in the following paragraph? This whole uh, page? The bottom, yes, sir. This one paragraph? Yes, sir. those are two sentences. Yes, sir. This paragraph and the paragraph. It is further ordered that Justin Keeney shall have the exclusive right to designate the child's primary residence with Bear County or the contingent counties of Bear. It is further ordered that this geographical restriction on the residence of the child shall be lifted if at the time Justin King wishes to remove the child from Bear County or the contentious counties of Bear for the purpose of changing the primary residence of the child. Amanda Lewis is not residing in Bear County or contentious counties of Bear. My colors to jury at this time, Your Honor? Yes. Um, you referenced where Amanda and Wardell lived during this time. Um, you said it was a duplex? Yes. Okay. Uh, whenever you did the um, transfer of Madison, how would that go? Who, where, where, were you, where was the pickup, drop-offs? Uh, she would pick her up from daycare at my house, by my house. Um, in, in Cyprus? No, in San Antonio. Okay. She never made an effort to pick her up. Or, or me when we moved. It, it's one at a time. Uh, so during the time that she lived here in San Antonio, and you lived in here in San Antonio, she picked her up from daycare. Yes, and sometimes from my house. Okay. And then once you moved to Cyprus, there was never any transfer at that point. No, we we tried. Like I said earlier, there was no effort from the mother. Okay. You said you tried um, 
in, in if you made her available? Is that what you're saying? Yes, we still came to town every other weekend. Okay. And so would you when you made when you came to town, what would you do to, in order to let Wardell and Amanda know that uh well, I would let her mother know, not Wardell. I would let her mother know we're in town if you want to see her. And sometimes she would. It was it just became very few uh and, and basically non existent after a while. And what year was that? Uh it would be probably around twenty uh fifteen. 2014. Okay, so during that time, from 2014 to 2019, was she ever there at the house? At their house? Was who? Madison. Sometimes she uh, spent a spring break there, uh, probably in that same year. And that's when we found out she was being watched by other people that we didn't know. Okay, so... That time that she was in 20, what year was that? I'm sorry. 2015. Okay. Around that time when I moved to Cyprus. But the incident where uh, you had the spring break visit, what year was that? Do you recall? I just said it was probably around 2015, that same year, sometime when spring break occurs. So 2015, and that's the last time you remember her being at their house? Roughly, yeah, uh, somewhere. Like I said, that's been a while, so I can't give you an exact date. And so after 2015 through 2019, she didn't go over there at all? No, she never made an effort um, after when we found out what happened. Um, you know, if I wasn't going to let my daughter be around somebody. And you said in that 2015 um, particular incident, she was being watched by other people? Yes. When you say other people, you're referring to not Amanda and not Wardell? That's correct. So neither one of them were in the household at the time? She she was, my daughter was being given to people at their work or whoever and going off places. Uh, when we tried to get in contact with her, with her, she wasn't available or we found out she was with somebody else. Okay, so. And her mother admitted to that. And that's, we had problems. Obviously, I'm not going to let my daughter just go with whoever. Okay. Um. How did you find out about that? Uh, Amanda admitted to it. Her mother admitted to it when we were trying to get it older during that spring break. Okay. And before we took her, she had promised she would be with her the whole time. Okay. And so other people were watching her, which means Mr. Lemon was n- not anywhere in the vicinity or with her in the household. Uh, as far as I, I don't know what happened the whole week. She wasn't with the people the whole week. I think I made that clear earlier. And let me ask you this. Uh, you and your wife, you ever go out like on date nights or anything else? Duck yeah. relevance. <laughs> yeah. All right. That'd be, excuse me. When any of the, the attorneys make an objection, you need to stop speaking so I can make a ruling on it. That's okay. And if I make my ruling or when I make my ruling, if you don't understand whether you can answer or not, just let the court know. All right. That objection will be sustained. Have you and your wife ever left uh, Madison with other people? Not other than family members. Okay. Uh, did you know if these people were family members? My family? No. Of either Amanda or Wardell? No, they're not. They weren't. My, my question, Miss Fo, hold you up there. My question is, did you know if they were? No. Okay. Now, you've never liked Wardell, correct? I don't know him. You remember sending some text messages to Amanda calling him a pimp? I don't recall any messages I sent. That's a long time ago. So you wouldn't disagree with that if it was something that was that she had? I would have to see it. I don't recall saying that. I'm sure back in the time when we broke up, there was a lot of things said between us. Now, have you ever threatened to send Amanda to jail? I have not. Uh, That will be overruled. You can answer the question. I have not. Uh, Do you recall telling her shortly after these or before these allegations that she'll be in jail soon? No, I did tell her for child support. 
she would be facing jail because she did go to court and was told basically on the, the point of going to jail. I object to non response your honor. That would be overruled. You filed a motion in September of 2019 to enforce uh, child support. Is that correct? Uh, I believe so. I don't recall the exact date. And when did you notify the police about what Madison had stated occurred to her? Uh, sometime in 2019. Do you know how close in time those incidents occurred? I do not. It never has no relevance to me. No relevance. All right, and sir, you don't have to move towards the microphone. It will pick up. Okay, sorry. Because the court report is getting some feedback now. Sorry. No problem. All right, defense. Thank you. Did, I, did Amanda ever give you child support informally, like cash payments? No. Objection relevance. Sustained. You yourself never talked to Amanda about, I'm sorry, to uh, Madison about what happened with her? Not as far as anything other than it happened. I didn't get into details because that's my daughter and it's kind of hard to listen to. So who was the person that you believe spoke to her about it? She came out and told my wife. It's okay. It's and when do you recall that taking place? I uh, believe 2019. Was there any delay in um, notifying the police? Once we found out, we let the police know right away. We called the police right away. So there, so there was not a delay? No. Okay. May I approach witness once again, Your Honor? Yes. And to mark defendants exhibit number two. Do you recognize that? Yes, I do. What is that? That's uh, a child support um, case or cause. Is that what uh, was filed by you in September of 2019? Yes, it was. Does it appear to be a true and accurate copy of that? Yes, it does. Now that's exhibit two or All right. Defense exhibit number two is admitted without objection. Yes. Between the time you moved to Houston, it was that 2015, 2014? That's correct. And 2019, how many times do you think? Um, Madison stayed at the house where Wardell and Amanda lived. I'm not sure. I can't, re you know, recall every single time. Well, I guess my, m earlier you've testified that <laughs> after you moved, they barely saw her. That's correct. They still saw her once in a while. I can't tell you how many exact times. Okay. Would you say it's more than five? I would say probably five or less. Okay. So less than five times. Probably, yes. Prior to moving, how often did she go over there? Uh, about every other week. Sometimes she would miss maybe at least once a month. So from so when she was about maybe six or seven? Yeah. She would go over there? Yep. Okay. And it's during the time that you lived here in San Antonio, the San Antonio area, and uh, Amanda and Wardell were dating, uh, did you know if they ever went on any kind of... Uh, Outings and ever do stuff together. Objection calls for hearsay. I'm not saying for his knowledge, Your Honor. If you know, I don't know. Okay. You had said that there were some issues that you were concerned about with Madison going over to stay with her mom, and you <laughs> talked to an attorney about it. No. Well, earlier you said you talked to an attorney, but there was not much you could do. Well, my attorney that did the child support case, I I asked her if there was anything I could do. And that's not much because there wasn't anything physical yet that we could prove. So there was nothing illegal. So there was nothing that you could do. Well, I, I was, my daughter would talk about illegal things. Let me stop so. right there. My, my question is, 
at that point, there was nothing illegal, so there was nothing you could do to change right. anything at that point. Correct. Okay. And in fact, did your attorney basically tell you all, until something illegal occurs is when that could change? Objection hearsay. <laughs> we didn't really. That, re I'll rephrase the question, Your Honor. All right, everyone. When an objection is made, I will make a response to that objection. So once you hear an attorney make an objection, do not respond. Okay? okay. All right. Uh, that objection will be sustained. Defense? Yes, Your Honor. Was it your impression that until something illegal occurred, nothing could be done? Correct. I have nothing further, Your Honor. State? Um, So that document was post is is filed in July of 2019. I believe so. Okay. So um, the custody order initially came out in 2010 for Madison. Yes, that's right? correct. So help the jury understand, what was it about July of 2019 that caused you to seek child support from Amanda? Well, at first when we moved, uh, I wasn't too worried about it. Just me having my daughter was, was enough. Um, as she gets older, you know, you should get paid child support for taking care of a child. Uh, during those, during that, that first year or two when we moved out there, uh, her mom would sometimes mention, hey, I'll help you when I can. I know. She doesn't have a lot of money. I don't even know if she works. Uh, so the chances of me getting child support, obviously, it took me a long time. to. I still get nothing. <laughs> uh, but that's it kind of just became where, hey, I got to do this. Um, and I can't take her word for maybe promising to do something later. And that's where it came about. Um, and that's when I I went through a, the long, extraneous uh, motion to get that done. And it's it's it was an ordeal. So, And um, when you filed that modification for child support, um, what were you hoping would happen? I just want her to pay her, her minimal child support. Obviously children are not cheap. <laughs> so, uh, and I was a single father while now I'm married, but uh, that was, that was a big part of the reason our expenses went up in Houston. Uh, we got a much nicer home. So costs were much higher. So it was kind of a, a must. And how many children were living with you at the time? Uh, just my daughter and my stepdaughter. Okay. Um, and you were here in Bear County or you, you were still in Houston? I was in Cyprus. In, in 2019. Okay. That's right. Um, didn't, did you ever talk to Madison about this child support modification? I mean, she was aware of it. Yeah. Yeah, I, I made it very clear her mom is not helping out. So. And and help me understand, you answered to defense counsel that you, if, if something illegal happened, what was the consequence you thought would happen? Yeah. I'm sorry? Defense counsel asked you, you were under the assumption that <coughs> something would happen if something illegal happened. Well, I could maybe notify CPS or something like that okay. was, was basically my, my intention if okay. that were happening. So if, but if there was something illegal hap happening, would that have in any way affected the child support order? Uh, no. Okay. Yeah. So um, how often was Madison seeing Amanda in 2019? Not, not at all. I, I, when you say not at all, do you mean zero? Yeah, I don't think she saw it all that year. Okay, so maybe uh, the beginning, I think the last time when that spring break trip, it might have been 2018, um, could have been 2019, but she wasn't seeing her after that spring break trip. So was there any reason for you to even call CPS in 2019? No, she wasn't even seeing her. So, no. Okay. This was back when we were, when I lived here in uh, Bear County. Um, no further questions, John. Just be clear on Yes. Uh, Mr. Keeney, um, just a minute ago, you said that uh, you filed for the child support. Um, you said after you got married and had and moved? 
Yeah, we had already married, I believe. So when you were a single father, you didn't ask for more child support. But she was watching every other. My question is, when you were a single father, did you ask for more child support? Yes or no? No. When you got married, had another child, moved into a new house, you asked for child support. I didn't have another child. I'm sorry. You had, so you already had this child? We were together in Bear County. My wife and I at the time, we've been together uh, multiple years before that. Okay. So before moving to Houston, you were together? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. We got married in San Antonio. We were married before that. And what year were you married? Uh, I want to say 2017, 2015, around there. I should know that, but I've been married uh, nine years, so. So Maybe closer to 2014? Yeah, 2015, 2014, somewhere around there. Okay. Um, No further questions, Anna. All right. Any other questions? Um, just to be clear, um, to your knowledge, was Amanda living with Wardell Lemon in 2019? Yes. She was. Yes. Um, and to your knowledge, was Amanda making money or Wardell making money? To my knowledge, uh, I don't think either of them had a job, so I don't know how they made money. Um, okay. I have no idea. No, I'll, I'll stop you there. Um, so. If your goal is to collect child support, um, would there be any motivation for Ward Lemon to get arrested? I, I don't see why or how. Thank you all. I could care less. I just wanted my daughter taken care of. Yeah. Thank you. No more questions. I have no further questions. All right. Is this witness excused or subject to recall? Please excuse me from excuse from the state. All right. The rule has been invoked. What that means is you can't discuss your testimony with anyone. You're only allowed to speak to attorneys for the state of the defense. Do you understand? All right. You may step down. State, who's your next next witness? Your Honor, the state calls Madison King. All right, Deputy Lohr. All right, if you'll take a seat here. Can you raise your right hand? Do you solemnly swear or affirm the testimony you give will be the truth and nothing but the truth? So help you, God. Yeah. All right. If you'll have a seat, uh, if you'll state your name for the record and be sure to keep your voice up so the court reporter can hear and the jurors can hear. Madison Keeney. All right. Okay. Um, hi, Madison. How old are you today? 16. And what grade are you in? About to be a junior. Okay. What classes are you taking? As far as curricular? Yeah. In school. Uh, well, I guess it's summer, right? So what what classes um, did you take in the past semester? I took all the English, um, world history, geometry, principles of health, um, and then one of my classes were track and cross country. Okay. And are you taking, are you planning to take any AP classes in the coming school year? Yes. How many? English and then world history. Okay. And um, you said you do track? Yes. Um, do you do any other extracurriculars? Um, Madison, who is your father? Justin. Okay. And who is your mother? What's her name? Amanda. Um. When was the last time you saw your mother? Four, five years ago, maybe. Um, do you remember how old you were? Sorry, I'm just. Um, and do you know um, anybody by the name of Wardell Lemon? Yes. How do you know him? He's my mother's boyfriend. Um, do you see him in the courtroom today? Mm -hmm. um, you can, if you would, identify him by an article of clothing. White shirt, bow tie, and blue pants. A tie or a bow tie? Tie. Okay. I'll ask the record reflect that she's identified the defendant, Wardell Lemon. How long have you known Wardell? As long as I've been going over to my mom's house. Um, 
Do you remember how young you were when you started going to your mom's house? Were you in elementary school? Yes, ma'am. Um, how often would you go there? Every other weekend. Okay. And um, who else lived in the house with them? Just them two. Um, when you would go there, would you have your own room? Yes. And um, can you help uh, the jury understand what kind of building or what, was it an apartment, a house? Um, it was a house. It was more of like a townhouse. There was one on each side. Okay. And how many bedrooms were there? Um, three. Um, when you would go on the weekends, would you get dropped off there? Um, how would you get there? I would get, they would meet my mom and maybe my grandma would take me. Okay. Um, um, where did you go to elementary school? Um, Okay. I went to elementary school here and then we moved to Houston and I went from, I believe, fourth grade to fifth grade. Okay. Um, so let's go back. Okay. So what year were you born? 2007. Okay. So... Let's see. So what year would you have started elementary school? 2012, 2013? Okay. So around that time, um, is that when you're saying you would start going to your mom's every other weekend? Yes. Um, what kind of things would you do at your mom's house? Sometimes I would go to work with her or we would go bowling some nights. Um, most of the time it was just hanging out at the house. Okay. And who would um, who would be there to hang out with? Wardell and my mom. Were there times when your mom um, wasn't at the house but Wardell was there? Yes. How often would that happen? Um, usually it would just happen when she was at work. Where did she work? Rollo's. Um, and what is that? It's a pizza place. Okay. Restaurant. And um, what kind of hours would she work? Um, usually just like lunch shifts or night shifts. Mm -hmm. um, and um, when she was at work, um, what kind of things would you do with Wardell? Let's stay busy. Just watch TV. I'm sorry, what was the last part? That's all. Just watch TV. Okay. Would you ever play video games? Yeah. Um, what kind of video sorry, games? Sorry, just one second. I'm so sorry. Uh, I'm going to need you to speak up a little bit so that the jurors can hear. Because if you remember the people on the further end, they'll have to be able to hear too, okay? All right, thank you. You may continue. Um, what kind of video games would you play? Um, Grand Theft Auto, GTA. Okay. Uh, what game system? Um, PS5. Okay. Or not PS5. Okay. And where would you play it in the in the um, townhome? Like what room? It was like the game room, or I guess you could say the living room. The living room. Um, what furniture was in there? There was a sofa that folded down into a bed. There's two of those, and then um, recently he added, like, a desk where he had a computer. Okay. Um, so where would you sit while you were playing video games? On the sofa that was facing the TV. Okay. And where would Wardell sit? Next to me. And he, would he be playing video games with you? Sometimes, yes. Um, did you ever do... Other things with Wardell? No. 
um, events or anything outside of the house? Not as far as I know. Okay. Um, did y'all ever watch sports together? Yes. What kind of sports? Um, basketball games. Okay. Um, what did you call him? Did, did you call him Wardell or did you have a nickname for him? I call him Buddy. Buddy? Did you, I mean, did you enjoy your time with Wardell or with Buddy? No. Um, how late would you watch TV or play video games? I would say like 10, 30, 11, maybe the latest. Okay. And um, was this a typical time when your mom would be working? Yes. Um, was there ever a time um, where you sat, you said usually Wardell would sit next to you on the couch. Were there ever times um, you would sit in any other position on the couch? Um, just when he moved me on top of him. Okay. Um, when you say on top of him, what do you mean? He would sit me on top of his lap. Okay. Um, now, when do you remember that he started doing that? There's not like a certain time. Um, did it happen more than once where he would sit you on his lap? And was it something that commonly happened or rarely happened? Commonly. Okay. Um, was it his idea? Was it generally his idea or your idea? His. And um, when you were sitting on his lap, would y'all continue watching TV and playing video games? Yes. Um, when he first started doing it, did you think anything of it? No. Why not? Um, when I remember him doing it, it just felt normal because it happened so often. Was there a time when... Um, he started um, maybe doing something that felt more uncomfortable. Just when you start touching me. Um, now, where where was the first place he touched you? Just on your body. The first place he touched me was my stomach, That's where it started. Okay. And um, did he ever talk to you about touching you on your stomach? No. Um, and how would he touch you on your stomach? He would just place his hand there and then slowly just move down. Okay. Um, now. Eventually, did it? Did that become a common thing for him to do? Yes. Um, you said he would move down. Would his hand start going lower? Yes. And so how soon, you said 2013 is when you started having, going on the weekends. How soon after that did you notice his hand would go on your stomach and then start going lower. As much as I remember going over there. Um, so would you say anything when his hand would start to go lower? No. How did you feel? Guilty in a way. You felt guilty? Why? I 
but I wasn't doing anything to stop it. Would he say anything to you? No. Okay. Now, after you said his, his, he would slowly, over time, move his hand lower, was there a time when, um, well, how low did his hand get? To the bottom of my private part. And um, I'm sorry, I'm going to have to get you to, to specify a little bit. When you say the bottom of your private part, um, do you mean um, what part of him was touching what part of you? His hand, his fingers would touch as far as where your pee hole would be. Okay. And when he, uh, kind of going back, when he started on your stomach and went lower, would he go over your underwear or under? Under. Did he ever go over your underwear? Sometimes, yes. <laughs> what would, how long would, did he touch you down there? I don't know. Do you remember how old you were? No. Did you ever tell your mother? No. Did you ever do anything to stop it from happening? Once I started realizing it was happening, I tried to remove myself from him. And how did you do that? By distracting him, saying something to him to where I could not sit on top of his lap and just sit beside him. Um, how would he respond when you would do that? He usually just let me get off of him. Um, why didn't you tell anybody when it was happening? I still wanted a relationship with my mom. And what were you afraid would happen if you told? That I would get in trouble. So going back to the incident where he put his hand all the way under your underwear in the part where you could pee from. Um, which hand did he have down? Which hand was it? His left. Do you remember what you were wearing? No. Would you hear anything when he did this? No. Do you remember um, the feeling of being on his lap? What you felt? I could just feel his hand slowly going down. How were you? You said you were on his lap. How far up on his lap were you? I would say like mid dive. Okay. How late would your mom work? I don't remember. Um, do you remember when you stopped going for the weekends? About how old you were? No, not necessarily. No. Okay. Do you remember how old you were when you went to Houston or when you moved to Cyprus? I believe it was fourth grade. Okay. Um, so, what grade are you in now? You're going to be a junior, right? Yes. Ma'am. So, 
do the math. How many years was that ago? 11 minus four, seven years ago. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, so nine years old. Yeah, about yes. Okay. Um, so about 2016. Okay. So if I'm following correctly, it was around 2013 to 2016 is when you were going over on the weekends. Yes. Okay. And do you recall um, how close in time, you know, the incident where he went all the way to, down to your private, how close in time that was to when you stopped going over there? <laughs> Now, before he, before when he went all the way down with his hand um, and he would just kind of go lower, how would he hold his hand lower? Like, how long would he just hold his hand there? He would just set it there for five minutes, maybe. Okay. Did you know it was wrong at the time? Yes. Were there any other things you would do to shield yourself from him when you would go over there? Just trying to avoid him, you know, avoid being close to him to where he can get to that point. Okay. Um, now going, um, do you remember when you first told an adult what happened? Yes. How old were you? Um, was seventh grade. Okay. Um, would that have been 2019? Yes. Um, had you seen your mother in 2019? No. Um, who did you tell? That one. And why did you tell her? She felt like the person that I can trust and own to tell. Um, where were you when you told her? We had just gotten out of the car walking into the store. Remember what store? Target. What did you tell her? I told her that Cordell touches me. Um, And who was with you? With her? If anyone. Me, her, and my stepsister. What's your stepsister's name? Addison. How old is she? She's now 13. So she was little. Yes. In 2019, did you want your mom in your life? In that moment, no. Why not? I knew that she wasn't a good mother to me. Did you ever try telling your mom what happened? No. Did you ever reach out to your mom after you told your stepmom what happened? No. Okay. Um, When you were on, well, let me ask you this. Do you know how many times Wardell put you on his lap? No. Um, Was it more than five? Yes. When you're sitting on his lap, could you ever feel anything about his body? I could just feel his knee in between my legs.
Did you ever see anything about his body? No. Did you ever look at him when he was touching you? No. Did you ever talk to him about it? No. Do you ever do you ever remember telling anyone that he was creepy or yes. something like that? What was it about him? Was it because he was touching you or was there something else? Or object to leading. Sustained. Why did you think he was creepy? Because of what he's done to me. Um, Madison, do you have any other? I, I know you have your your um, stepsister. Do you have any other um, siblings? Just a baby sister. Baby sister. Um, is that with your dad? Yes. Um, what about your mom? Do you have any half siblings with your mom? Yes. How many? Just one. Do you have any relationship with them? No. Would you ever like to have a relationship with them? No. Okay. I'll pass it, Mr. Honor. Depends. May I proceed, Your Honor? Yes. Good morning, Madison. My name is Leo Gonzalez. I represent Wardell Lemon. I'm going to ask you a few questions, okay? Um, if you don't understand my question, you can ask me to repeat my question, okay? And just make sure that you get an answer so the court reporter can get it down, okay? Okay? Okay. Thank you. Now, uh, Madison, you said you're going to be a junior? Yes. And at what school? Brian Steele High School. I'm sorry? Steel High School. Steel High School? Okay. And uh, you have you been at Steel for the last two years? Yes, sir. Okay. Um, how, uh, what school did you go to in middle school? Was, um, I guess a better question is, was that here in San Antonio or in uh, Houston? In Houston. Okay. Um, and have you always been in high school here in the San Antonio area? Yes. You said that uh, you're taking, I guess you took um, honors classes last year? Yes. Okay. And um, you mentioned tennis, I'm sorry, track uh, as an extracurricular. Are you doing any other extracurricular activities? No. Just track? And cross country. Okay. Which is more long distance track, right? Yes. Okay. Um, have you done that the whole time in high school? Can you repeat the question? Yeah. Have you done that the whole time in high school? Yes. Competed in track? Yes. Okay. What events do you do? I do the 800, 400, and then 1600. You're pretty good? I'd like to say so. Okay. Um, have you always been involved in athletics? Yes. In middle school too? Yes. Okay. What kind of athletics were you in? Track and cross country. Okay. No other athletics? No. Any other extracurriculars in middle school? Um, I did orchestra, I think, seventh grade. Okay. Did you play, so violin, viola? One of those? Viola. Okay. And um, just in seventh grade? Yes. Okay. Um, any other extracurriculars you did when you were younger? No. Any other sports? Uh, that you did when you were younger? No. Uh, when did you start playing sports? Um, seventh grade. Seventh grade. Um, I guess that was for school. Did you have any play any sports outside of school? No. No. Okay. Um, and seventh grade would have been four years ago? Yes. Okay. Um, Do you remember how old, I think you were asked this question already, how old you were when you first started going over to your mom's house? No. Okay. Were you, do you recall being real little? Do you recall being in school? 
I recall being in school, and as far as I remember, I was little. Okay. Um, and when you would go, had, did you always go to the same house? Yes. And where was that? The house that they currently live at. Okay. And the house they currently live at, that's the house that they've lived at this whole time? As far as I know, yes. Okay. So they've had, the residence hasn't changed? Yes. Okay. Um, have you kept track of what's going on with them in their lives? Like it's not moving, working, things like that? No. Okay. But you do know that they still live at that address? Yes. Okay. Um. So when you first started going over there, it must have been, I guess, a little different to all of a sudden have somebody else in your house. You had Wardell at the house, correct? Yes. Okay. How did you first get along with him? I really don't remember meeting him, but. I guess, I, and I don't, I know you might not remember meeting him because you were young, but how did you get along with him when you first started going over there? Fine. Okay. Did y'all hang out and do stuff together? You, Wardell, and your mom? Yes. What kind of stuff did you do? We would all hang out together, um, order in food, bowl. So, like, y'all like to play games, apparently, like video games? Yes. Um, how did y'all end up on Grand Theft Auto, like, as far as for the game that y'all played regularly? That's what he would pick. Okay. Um, did you ever tell him you didn't want to play that game? No. Did you like playing that game? Yes. Okay. Um, and so, to a certain extent, you did enjoy your time with Wardell, playing video games, hanging out. When it didn't get to touching me, yes. But my question is, you did enjoy hanging out with him, right? Yes. And there was a good period of time where you would play video games, according to you, even while you were sitting on his lap. Yes. Okay. Um. You said, how often would you go and, and, and spend time at your mom's? Every other weekend. All right. So when you say every other weekend, tell me, like, when would you get there? What day? Saturday. Okay. And then leave when? Sunday morning, evening. Okay. So basically, you were there for, like, 24 hours, maybe? Mm -hmm. Is that right? Yes. Okay. Um, and that was a few weeks a year because it was every other weekend yes um were there times that you didn't go over there just because of stuff with your own with living with your dad where you couldn't go over there or something like that yes all right what would what other stuff would be going on i don't remember okay. when you were there hanging out at the house with um your mom and wardell there was times when your mom was at the house, right? Yes. Okay. So she didn't work every time you were there at the house. No. And in fact, sometimes when she did work, she took you to work with her. Yes. Okay. And so there were times you were not at home with Wardell. You were at work with your mom. Yes. But most times I was left. Okay. But there were times, right? Yes. Okay. And then also, were there times that Wardell would go with y'all to your mom's work? He would drop us to off at work. And then go back home? Yes. Or at least leave, right? Yes. Okay. Now, earlier you were asked about um, when things changed. When do you remember how old you were when that something happened that things changed between you and Wardell? I don't remember. Okay. And uh, just one moment. Yes, Judge. Sorry. Does anyone need a slight break? I noticed a lot of movement over there in the creaky chairs. All right. So I'm going to give you all a, a short break. And we can come back at 1140. Is that enough time for everyone? All right. You've heard some evidence in this case. You're not allowed to start deliberating in your mind with yourself or with each other. I'll let you know when it's time to deliberate. 
If you see anything or somebody tries to ask you something about this case, don't respond. Don't look at it. You're not allowed to do any investigation of your own. Everything that you need to know about this case is to come from inside the courtroom. Does everyone understand? All right. So uh, what will end up happening is don't come back in the courtroom. Go back to the jury room and Deputy Laura will come and get you at 1140. All right, everyone, please rise. The defense uh, informed the court that they wanted to have a hearing on the outcry. Okay. So we're back on the record. Oh, no problem. I understand. All right. We're back on the record in 2020 CR 7353, State of Texas versus Wardell Lemon. Can I have parties announced for the record for the state? Brittany Mitchell and Ruben Herrera for the state. And for the defense? Leo Gonzalez for the defense. All right. And Mr. Lemon is present in the courtroom. Uh, the court had a hearing for the outcry, and I explained to both that we were taking those out of sequence just so that we wouldn't keep the jurors waiting, and the defense informed the court that there was an issue, or maybe the defense has an issue with who the outcry witness is. Uh, it wasn't an ex parte per se. The defense just said, told the court while the state was outside, I want to have a hearing or an argument with regards to who the state intends to call as the outcry. Okay, that's fine. I, I, I agree. I think, I think we need, technically need to take more. All right. And All right. Def I'm sorry, Judge. No, 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 no problem. Defense? And so the only reason, Your Honor, we just want to make sure we get a ruling officially on the record about whether or not she can testify as an outcry hearing. Obviously, she can testify as a witness, but in order to get to certain things that are elicited that it would be te uh, hearsay, she has to be designated as an outcry. We understand she's been designated as an outcry. We understand based upon Madison's testimony. Yes, slow down. Sorry. And and counsel, you can have a seat. I don't take it oh, as okay. a sign of disrespect. It makes it easier for the court reporter to hear. And I find that when people sit down, people keep everything at this level. That makes sense. All right. Okay. So uh, we've heard from Madison that it was the first uh, adult that she told about what took place. Uh, the only uh, issue we have is that uh, we object because we believe that the outcry witness when she testified earlier uh, could not give a time frame as to when the outcry took place. She was unclear as to what exactly the child outcry to. And then based on Madison's testimony, um, it wasn't, it didn't appear to be an outcry as more of a response to a question. So we believe it's, it'd be improper to use this particular witness as an outcry witness. So that would be our objection. All right. State with regards to it being a question. I do recall the complainant testifying that she was asked certain things. Yeah. I, and I think I can maybe clarify that with, with the witness, but um, because it, it, if you recall earlier, um, Miss the outcry, our intended outcry witness, Miss Keeney testified that Madison had referred to Wardell as creepy. Um, so I think it would make sense that at that point she would have said, did he do something to you? Um, that's where I think it fell in, but without having them together. And, and, and that question about, did she ask you didn't come out and, until defense questioning, Madison did not say that on direct examination. So, um, I, I think Madison was consistent in that her stepmom was the first adult that she told and that she told her that, um, he touched her down there. I think the sexual acts themselves and the person who was told the first is consistent. And I think uh, for an outcry, I think the reliability of that outcry um, is established that way. All right. The court's concern or question is not that she told her anything. The court's focus at this time is the defense stating, whether it be on his recross or cross, that the complainant testified that the stepmother asked questions of her. And I think both parties would agree that an outcry is not an outcry where someone is asking you questions. I, I respectfully judge, I, I actually believe that would still be considered an outcry because it, it's still the first adult who is told that uh, the defendant committed these acts, whether it's from them questioning them or or not, because there are multiple times when we have a forensic examiner 
as the outcry. Um, it's just it's just when the actual allegations first come out to an adult. The only thing I would say about that, Your Honor, is I do uh, I understand that forensic examiners do ask a question. However, theirs is a more of a general question, open ended. Has anybody? Can you tell me anything that's happened? This was in response to my question. She was specifically told, "Did this person do something to you?" And so, to me, it's not in the same way an outcry, and and the way it's been framed in the notice of outcry that they filed was that this was a um just a random stating of what took place um after another conversation so i believe that what we've been given notice of as far as for what she's going to outcry to is unreliable in in regards to the testimony we've received here today uh, in addition the timing is something the court can consider and since the outcry witness is unclear as to when the outcry took place her own testimony this morning was that there was a, a lag in time before she actually reported it to police um, indicates there may have been supposedly some other outcry some other time. So we can't even be clear as to uh, when this alleged outcry took place. All right. Could I see the statement that was filed with the court and with defense. Yes, judge. <laughs> All right. Is there anything else from either side? No, Your Honor. All right. So I will allow the witness to uh, testify and the court will find that this is the outcry witness. And that would be the stepmother, Miss Keeney. Is there anything else from either side? No, Your Honor. No, thank you. Uh, defense. Oh, thank you, Your Honor. You're welcome. All right, State, if you'll bring uh, your witness in, please. We're ready. All right, for the jury. <laughs> All right, everyone, please do see that. All right, can you raise your right hand for me, please? Do you solemnly swear or affirm the testimony you give will be the truth and nothing but the truth? So help you God? Yes, ma'am. All right, you can lower your hand. And ladies and gentlemen, the state called this witness while you were in the back. So she has been called as a witness by the state. Can you state your name for the record, please, and spell it? Linda Kinney, and that's L-Y-N-D-A, Kinney, K-E-E-N-E-Y. All right, state. Okay. Um, Ms. Kinney, um, where do you currently reside? In Shorts, Texas. Okay. Um, and um, do you know Madison Kinney? Yes, ma'am. How do you know her? She's my stepdaughter. Okay. Um, and who is your husband? Justin Kinney. Um, where did you live before you moved to Shirts? Uh, we lived in Houston, Texas. And then uh, before that, where did you live? Uh, before moving to Houston, we lived in San Antonio. Okay. Um, when did you move to Houston? Um, I would say. Ooh, I can't remember roughly what year. Um, I would say maybe 2016. I'm not really sure, to be honest. Um, we lived there for about three to four years. Okay. Do you have, other than um, your stepdaughter, Madison, do you have any other children that reside with you? Yes, ma'am. Who, who resides with you? Um, my daughter, Addison, from a previous marriage. And then Justin, and I had a daughter, Charlotte. Okay. Um, how old is Addison? She's 13. Okay. Um, do you recall um, a day when um, Addison and Madison were, were with you and there was um, a statement made about a Wardell lemon? Yes, ma'am. Can you tell me what happened that day? Um, that day I was taking Addison and Madison to Target 
um, as we were driving to Target, the girls were just kind of being silly, talking about liking boys at school. And, you know, we were just kind of, you know, making little remarks, laughing, you know, just having girl talk. Um, and in the mix of that, Madison had stated, oh, daddy's going to be really strict when it's my time to date. Um, and I stated that, oh, daddy just wants you to date someone good from a good home and, you know, good background. And then she stated, not someone like my mommy's boyfriend. And I said, she, of course, stated that he was creepy. And I didn't say anything. I didn't elaborate on it. I just kind of let her continue talking. And she kept on telling me that she wanted to tell me something. And I told her, of course, she could tell me something. And she begged multiple times for me not to tell her daddy that she wanted to tell me something. Okay. Um, at that time, did you suspect it was, it was something involving Wardell Lemon? No. Okay. Um, do you, have you met Wardell Lemon? No, I have never physically introduced to one another just in passing, I think maybe once. Okay. And, and who is that? Wardell? Yes. Um, from my knowledge, that's Amanda Madison's mother's boyfriend. Okay. Um, so at that time, did Madison tell you something about Mr. Lemon? Yes, ma'am. What did she tell you? Uh, then she proceeded to tell me that he would describe it as, you know, rubbing her belly, rubbing her tummy. And then he would put his hands down her pants and touch her, you know, she would say her lady parts. Okay. Um. What was Madison's, um, we'll say, emotional state while she was telling you this? She was crying. Um, and what did you do when you heard this information? I, of course, was naturally crying um, why she was telling me this. And we didn't go inside the store. I just, you know, drove out of the parking lot and went straight home and told Justin. Um. How soon after that did police get involved? Um, immediately. Right when I told him, he called the police. Did Madison tell you where it was that uh, Mr. Lemon would touch her? What location? This, she said, you know, she would kind of point and show me. I, I mean, um, geographically located, like, because you were in Houston at the time. Yes. Where did it occur? She said it would occur when she'd go to her mother's house. And where was her mother's house? In San Antonio. Okay. Um, and what time frame was she going to her mother's house? Um, when we lived in Houston at the time, it was kind of maybe once a month. Um, it wasn't like every weekend or anything. Kind, of, I had to come down to San Antonio to take my daughter to see her father, so I would bring Madison to see her mother, and sometimes. She would show and sometimes she wouldn't. So it's kind of hard to say. It wasn't always monthly. Okay. So it was sporadic? Yes, ma'am. Um, did you have conversations with Madison about her mother? No, just sometimes she would talk about her mom. Um, do you recall that or do you have any knowledge of... Um, ongoing, um, I guess, um, court filings involving her mom around that time? No. Um, uh, when Madison would talk to you about her mom, um, was it, um, well, do you recall talking to Madison about her mom the day that she told you what? No, ma'am. And um, without going into what else she has told you, have you have you talked to Madison more about what happened? No, I have not, because when we did our interview, they stated to not kind of try to talk about it. Let her do the talking on her own time. Okay. Uh, thank you. I'll pass the witness. Right, Yes. Thank you. 
Good afternoon, Ms. Keeney. My name is Leo Gonzalez. I am an attorney for Wardell Lemon. Uh, if you don't understand any questions that I have, please let me know, okay? Okay. Thank you. Now, when did you and uh, Justin Keeney, uh, I guess, begin dating? In 2013. And were you living here in San Antonio during that time? Yes. Okay. And at that time, were you where he had a daughter? Yes. And did you have a daughter at that time also? Yes. Um, how long before, I guess, the relationship? Did, my understanding is you got married, correct? Yes. What year did you get married? 2014. 2014. Okay. In 2014, when you got married, um, at that point, where was Madison living? With her father, Justin and I. Okay. And so how often would she go and visit her mother? During that time when we lived here, every other weekend. And how would that get facilitated as far as for the pickup and drop off? Her mother would pick her up Friday at school and then drop her off Monday morning at school. Okay. So never at the house? Never. Okay. I need... Um, Anybody else that would, if there was, she was unable to pick up Madison at school, was there ever a time when somebody else dropped her off at her house or anything like that? Uh, not when we lived here in San Antonio that I'm aware of. Okay, so, and during that time, did you uh, ever get any concerns for Madison staying with her mom? Um, yes, I did have some concerns. Did you voice those to your husband? Yes. Okay. And did he try to do anything about it? He stated that he would discuss oh, it. I guess my question is to you, did he do anything about it? He would talk to her mother. Okay. And are you aware that they had conversations about things? Yes. Okay. Did he ever seek an attorney to your knowledge to figure out if there's anything else he could do? To my knowledge, no. Okay. And... Did you know that she was dating Wardell Lemon? Amanda was? Yes. Okay. Um, Madison being your stepdaughter, she'd come back from these visits. How, what was her demeanor when she came back? Um, sometimes she was just a normal kid, and then sometimes she was very emotional. And kids tend to be that way, right? They do. Were there times it was hard for her to leave her mom's? I don't think there was ever she struggled with that. But there were times? No, I don't think she struggled with that. At all? At all. Okay. Um, whenever she had to go to her mom's, did she ever have any trouble going? No. Did y'all um, like follow each other on on uh, social media? And like, did you know what was going on whenever she'd stay with um, Amanda? No. Do you know if your husband had any social media presence that followed either one of them? Not to my knowledge, no. Okay. Um, did she ever talk about Wardell? I'm talking about Madison. No, not really. At all. And she would mention that her mom and Wardell would go to a bowling alley when she'd be with them, you know, anything along those lines. But so, not. so she would talk about things that they may have done. Yes. Okay. Um, you said you were not aware of any kind of um, court filings that were filed during this time? No. So you were not aware that your husband had filed to modify child support? I don't believe he filed to modify. I believe from her mother not paying. May I approach witness, John? Yes. I'm going to show you some Marcus states. I'm sorry, defense exhibits number two. Do you recognize that? This is a court document. Okay, so is this the first time you've seen that document? Yes. So, uh, can, it's been entered into evidence already. What does it say on there? It looks like it's uh, a motion for enforcement. And? 
and suit for modification of child support order. Okay. So during this time it was filed, did you have conversations with your husband about that? About it being filed? Yes. He came to court because of her mother not paying. That's I'm going to object to non-responsive, Your Honor. Sustained. I just listened to the question and answered the question that's being asked. My question to you is, did you have conversations with your husband about filing these documents? We did not have conversations other than him going to court. So when did you find out he had filed it? When he went to his court date. So this issue of enforcement and modification was something that was a surprise to you? No, because her mother would never pay. So you knew that this was ongoing then? No, what I'm saying is I'm not surprised that it got modified. No, my, that's not my question. My question to you is where you, you just said you didn't know that it had been filed, that you only found out when he went to court. Yes. So at that point, it was a surprise to you that he had even filed the documents. Yes, that it was going to modification. Yes, to that phase. So he was doing something without you knowing what was going on with that whole situation. I, if you want to interpret it that way, then. I object to the non-responsive once again. Sustained. My question is yes or no. Did you, were you surprised? Were you not aware that he was, he had filed these motions? Yes. You were not aware. I was not aware other than the court. That's not, my question is, were you not aware? I said yes. Okay. Now, the day that. This outcry that you've talked about here today occurred. What were y'all doing that day? Like I said, going to Target. And who was going to Target? Myself, Madison, and my daughter. And when you talk about your daughter, you're talking about Addison. Yes. So you don't refer to Madison as your daughter. Madison is my daughter, but we're here talking. My daughter, I wasn't aware that I needed to state her name. So how did it, what was the conversation like in the car? You kind of said it was girl talk, but what, how did it progress from girl talk to an outcry? Like I said, my daughter and Madison were talking about liking boys, just conversation about school. And my daughter had mentioned a boy's eyes were blue and she loved the way they sparkled and he had freckles and she would connect his freckles. It was just little innocent girl talk. And so then how did what my question was, how did it get to the outcry? Because Madison mentioned about when she when it comes time to her dating and her dad being a little strict and wanting a certain thing. And then she I said, your dad just wants you to date someone good from a good family, a good background. And she, that's when she stated someone not like my mommy's boyfriend. He's creepy. So did you ask her any questions about that afterwards? No. Like I said previously, I. We're just surprised. Well, let me backtrack. So did you ever have a conversation with Madison about people doing things you're not supposed to do, uh, like touching you or anything inappropriate that might bother you and about having a conversation with her about that i never had conversation but she's a little girl like my little girl and i let them be aware don't ever let anyone touch you whether it's on your arm your hair wherever you don't feel comfortable so you did talk to him about it not in regards to wardell in regards to just a situation in general okay so that's funny you mentioned that so if you're saying that you never had a conversation with Madison about whether or not Wardell did anything to her. What I'm you the question you just asked. I'm objecting on responsive once again, Your Honor. Sustained. My question to you is: Did you ever have a conversation with Madison about, and where you asked her the question, if Wardell ever did anything to her? I have never asked her. Okay. Now, the day that this outcry occurred, you said you called the police? Yes, my husband did. Okay. And then uh, what happened after you called the police? We waited for a police officer to show up at our home. 
Okay. And once they showed up at your home, what happened at that point? That's when the officer talked to myself. Um, he briefly had to see Madison. And then he, of course, my husband was crying and he was consoling him. Now, um, you talked to the officer about what Madison had told you? Yes. Okay. Do you recall telling the officer that? Wardell, this happened to her, that he would go into her bedroom and begin rubbing her stomach? I did not state that. You don't recall saying that? I did not state that. Okay. What did you state then? Exactly what I said previously, that we were in the car on our way to Target, girl talk. They were making little remarks about boys. And then she eventually stated that he was creepy and she wanted to tell me something. Did you uh, ever recall, recall telling the officer that um, she said that Lemon would pull her pants down and then stimulate her sexual organs? No. Did you ever tell the officer that uh, he wasn't sure if intercourse or penetration occurred? I never stated any of that. And you never told the officer that she never responded yes as to whether or not this occurred, but she just started crying? And yes, that's I, exactly what I told you previously. I told the officer. Okay, so she never gave a complete answer as to whether or not intercourse or penetration occurred. I she never just, asked her that. You didn't. Okay, so how do you think it ended up on the officer's report? I do not know. That's the speculation. It's a strange. So let me ask you this. Um, are you saying that anything that was collected as part of an investigation written down by from in an officer's report um, that might be contradictory to yours is because of the officer or because of you? I'm going to say the officer. And you would agree with me that an officer can't take down correctly what has been told to you that calls into question their investigation. Objective speculation. Sustained. Well, in your, in your, in your belief, if you were, told that somebody had gotten down wrong what you had said, would that concern you? Yes. And you would also agree with me that if there was inconsistencies, that would hurt how truthful these statements were that you said that Madison told you? Object to, to speculation, vague. Got to be overruled. Did you agree with me that that would affect whether or not people were able to believe those statements, if there were some kind of inconsistencies between what you told the officer and what you're testified here today? Object, she's not an expert as to inconsistencies engaging a case. Sustained. If there was a difference between your story now and then, that would be a concern, right? Yes. After this uh, discussion with the officer, what happened then as far as for the investigation? Uh, we waited for, I can't remember who first contacted us and told us that someone would be in contact um, for us to have the interview. And did you, in fact, have that interview? Yes. Were you there at that interview? Yes. And like, were you present during the interview or just there at the location? I was just there at the facility. They did it with her and a professional. I'm not really sure their name. Did your husband ever talk to you about Wardell? No. Did he ever tell you he didn't like Wardell? No. Did it, would it surprise you if he didn't like Wardell? Would it surprise me? Yes. Um, no, especially knowing what we know now. Prior to the allegations coming out, would that surprise you? Yes. Also, um, was there ever a time that you or your mother 
or your husband's mother dropped off Madison at uh, Amanda's house. Object to lack of personal knowledge about what other people did. Ask her if she's aware. You can answer. Was, can you repeat? Yeah, I'll repeat the question. Um, was there ever a time that you yourself dropped off Amanda at, I'm sorry, at Madison at Amanda's house? Yes, when we lived in Houston. Were there times where you dropped her off and Justin didn't know? Never. Okay. Were there times that your mother or your husband's mother dropped her off at that you're aware of at Amanda's house? No. Um, you said during the time that you were in Houston, there was a couple of times you dropped her off. At Amanda's house. There was, I believe, once or maybe twice. I'll pass the sure. State. You said on cross that at times Madison would be emotional when she returned home from her mom's house. Can you, um, I guess, explain what you mean by emotional? Sometimes the day that she got home or the next day she would just cry. And I'd kind of ask her, are you okay? What's going on? Do you need to talk? And she just wouldn't talk. Was her mom a sensitive subject? Yes. So did her being emotional cause you to suspect anything? As far as with her mother or? As far as... uh, did you attribute her being emotional to the fact that you know, she missed her mom or was, or were there yes. other reasons? That you- I would kind of just assume, you know, she's a small child. She, she misses her mother naturally. What any child wants is their mom or dad. Okay. Um, did you, um, bring Madison to court today? Yes, with my husband. Um, did she seem, did she want to testify? She Reject was honored relevance. Sustained. No further questions, John. Just briefly, Ron. Um, does Madison have any social media accounts? Yes. What does she have? Instagram. Anything else? Object to relevance. Overrule. Anything else? No. Okay. Are you aware that, um, her mother's tried to reach out to her on different social media to make contact. No, I'm not aware. Okay. Are you aware that um, she's been blocked on those social media accounts? I am not aware. So are you aware of what's on Madison's social media accounts? Yes. Okay. You're aware of all the social media accounts that she has. To my knowledge, it's only Instagram. But does she have more than one account on Instagram? From my knowledge, no. You said your there was times where you drop off your daughter and Madison at I guess your daughter at her father's and Madison at her mother's when you came to San Antonio. Yes, I would either meet her at a location. So during the time you were doing this custody drop off, you were also participating in your own. Yes. Okay. Um, and so whenever that would occur, would you go back home and then your daughter would be brought back to you? No, I would stay in town. Okay. So you would stay in town um, and then your daughter would be brought to you wherever you were at. Yes. I would pick my daughter up and then we'd meet. And you'd also Madison. pick up Madison? Yes. I'd meet for Madison. Your daughter ever have any issues when she left and came home? As far as uh, were emotional? No. Never? No. So just Madison? Yes. The conversation you had with the police officer um, that day, 
that the outcry took place. How long conversation was that? Um, maybe 30 minutes, maybe an hour. Was that the actual conversation or 30 minutes or an hour that they were there? The actual conversation. So what else did you talk about in the 30 minutes or an hour that you had this conversation? I mean, you've talked to us about what the outcry was that day and it didn't take 30 minutes or an hour. What, what else did y'all discuss? There was nothing else discussed. It was the first time hearing it. So it's very hard to say it. So you would agree with me that there may have been some things you said that were different than the, no. the now? Not at all? Not at all. Not. So four years ago, it's exactly the same? It's exactly the same. Nothing further. Any further questions? Um, just briefly. Uh, you mentioned that you took Madison to get an interview. Yes. Did you also take her somewhere to get examined? They did it all in one facility. Okay. Were you present with Madison when she was examined? They told me I could not. Okay. Um, so you weren't present at all for the exam? No, they wouldn't allow me. Okay. All right. No further questions. One question, Your Honor. Um, you weren't aware of what year this allegedly took place? No. Nothing further, Your Honor. Nothing further. All right. Is this witness excused or subject to recall? Excuse, Your Honor. Excuse from me. <clears throat> the rule has been invoked. What that means is you can't discuss your testimony with anyone. The only persons you're allowed to speak to are attorneys for the state or the defense. Yes, ma'am. All right. And if possible, if you'll pass that exhibit to the court reporter, okay. please. Thank you. State, call your next witness. Uh, state calls Detective O'Brien. All right, can you raise your right hand? Do you sm solemnly swear or affirm the testimony you give will be the truth and nothing but the truth will help you, God? Yes. All right, just have a seat. Make sure you mm -hmm. keep your voice up so the court reporter can hear and the jurors can hear. If you could state your name for the record and spell it, please. Uh, my name is Alicia, A L I C I A O'Brien, O B R I E N. State. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, good afternoon, Detective. Um, if I can start out, wh where are you currently employed? Um, I'm currently a sergeant with the San Antonio Police Department. And how long have you been employed by the San Antonio Police Department? 11 years. And um, prior to your employment, did you attend the police academy? Yes. And did you take written and practical exams at the academy? Yes. Did you pass those exams? Yes. And um, in 2019, um, what unit were you assigned to? I was assigned to the Special Victims Unit, primarily on the sex crime side of the division. Um, and how long total were you with that division? Four years. And were you involved in an investigation um, involving the, the, the defendant, Wardell Lemon? Yes. And um, were, was SAPD the uh, initiating? Uh, agency in this investigation? We were not. Who was? Uh, Harris County. And when did you become involved in the investigation? Uh, so it, I guess I'll just kind of walk you through it. So the report was taken in Harris County uh, because it happened in San Antonio. Um, as a courtesy, agencies will take the preliminary report, uh, basically get all the, the who, wit, who, what, when, and why, and then they will send that report to the jurisdiction that the offense occurred in, which in this case was San Antonio. Um, so that gets sent to the special victims unit um, because that is a Harris County report number that gets transferred to an SAPD report number and then ultimately assigned a detective for follow up. And um, so before you received the case, what had already been done in the investigation? Uh, I believe just the preliminary report. Um, so once you and SAPD received the, the case, what was your first step in your investigation? Uh, the first step in this investigation was to reach out to um, the victim's family because the victim was a minor when I got the case. She was 12. Uh, I reached out to um, stepmom, who is the one that initiated the report, and she was the outcry witness. Uh, and ultimately, I figured she was a safe person that uh, the victim felt comfortable talking to originally. Uh, so I talked to her and um, the purpose was to coordinate 
uh, time for uh, the victim to be forensically interviewed in Harris County. Okay. And um, did you uh, eventually set up that, that interview with the victim yes. and her family? Okay. And were you present when the forensic interview was conducted? I was not. It was conducted in Harris County. Okay. Um, so um, did you uh, review any materials from the forensic interview? Yes. What did you review? Um, so after the forensic interview is conducted, um, they pretty much burn a DVD and they send it to me, uh, and then I have a chance to view it. Uh, so with this, um, do you want me to go into what was on it? Um, I guess what was what was recorded without going into any statements. I mean, what was re- what was on that disc? Okay, so let me explain the forensic interview because I don't think many people are what's involved. Uh, So the forensic interview is conducted purposefully by someone that is non-law enforcement. They have the minimum required of a master's degree, uh, and their job is primarily to elicit information from children in a non-leading way. Um, They create a safe environment uh, where it's one-on-one in a nice, comfortable room uh, so the child feels safe and not cornered or uh, doesn't feel like an interrogation. So when I viewed um, the forensic interview, she talks about this time. At the time she's being interviewed, she's 12. She talks about a time between the ages, I believe, from six to nine. Sustained. So with... Without going into the, the the details of the actual forensic interview, um, when you're reviewing a forensic interview, what are you looking for um, in order to justify further investigation into any kind of allegation? Yeah, so I'm looking for um, his consistency. I'm looking for her to be able to describe in detail things that have occurred. Uh, her forensic interview, she was very detailed. Um, I'm also watching her emotional response to things um, that would be age appropriate for a 12 year old, the words she used in her interview. Um, All of those things uh, are consistent in in her forensic interview. Okay. And um, in these- More about picking out more details because originally the reports are kind of vague purposefully uh, because we don't want victims to be re-traumatized and have to tell the story over and over and over. So for the most part, we try to get all of that done in the forensic interview. Okay. And um, in these forensic interviews, do you also look for um, indicators of grooming? Yes. And uh, what is grooming? So grooming, I think the best way I can describe it is, is kind of when people test the water. So you might have an adult figure, um, starting with something minor with a child, it might be tickling. It might be telling them like, this is okay. Like reinforcing, like this is a normal thing to do. Um, and then if the kid is okay with that, they start taking it to the next step. It might be touching a different part that might be more close to a breast or a genital, um, and then kind of seeing how far they can go before there's a response from the kid. It's okay. primarily to make the kid more comfortable with everything they keep doing over and over and over. Okay. And in this case, did you see any um, indications of grooming or any clues of grooming? I did. And what were those? Yeah, with um, this victim started talking about um, initially having the suspects. Uh, object on her to hearsay. Sustained. Um, well. Um, well, when you reviewed the um, forensic interviews, what um, was uh, any statements made in the forensic interview consistent with anything that was included in prior reports? Are you talking about the original report from Harris County? Yes. Yes. Okay. Um, Um, were there any other statements from the victim that you were able to compare that with? Yes, she, after the forensic interview, she was sent to um, get a medical examination conducted. Um, 
I can't, I don't know what it's called in Harris County, but uh, the place here would be Center Center for Miracles, um, where they talk about um, any kind of trauma that has been inflicted upon them, whether it's physical or sexual, and they provide further resources moving forward. But they also provide a statement of what happened. And were the statements made at that time consistent with statements that the victim made previously? Yes. Okay. Um, And um, so after the um, forensic interview was conducted, what was the next step you took in your investigation? The next step after that is I tried to contact uh, the victim's biological mother. Um, the, the biological mother was, it was, it was, it happened in her household and she was in a relationship with the suspect. Uh, so I made multiple attempts to contact her, uh, but she never returned any of my phone calls. Why did you try to get in contact with her? Um, I want to talk to her about, well, I mean, like, like I said, she lived there. Mm -hmm. She was in a relationship. I wanted to see what, how much she knew about it. Um, I also wanted to, um, I talked about, obviously, if she's witnessed any of it, that's a possibility as well. Um, and anything further that she could provide me on uh, the suspect. Okay. And did you try to get in touch with anybody else during your investigation? You want to yes. approach? Yes. I'm going to give you all a 10 minute break, but remember my previous instructions. All right. All right, everyone, please rise to the jurors. Oh, oh no, the, the AC is out. They say that there are some parts. At first, it was a compressor. Why they say that? The parts that are needed have been outsourced. Oh, so that from the sign up. Only MacGyver were here. Yeah. <laughs> All right, everyone, please be seated. Okay. All right. So, defense and state, of course, the court is hearing this information the first time, the way everyone else is hearing it. So if you will ask your question, please, that way I can hear uh, the defense's objections. Yes, so if you could pre ask your previous question. Yes. Uh, Detective, did you attempt to uh, contact anybody else during, during your investigation? Yes, I attempted to contact this suspect. Okay. And um, did, you, uh, did you successfully make contact with the defendant? Yes, um, we scheduled an appointment for him to come to police headquarters um, to sit down and talk to me about this incident. And um, did he um, show up for, did, did he show up to speak with you? No, the day of he called um, as a courtesy to say that he was not interested in coming. All right. And do you have any questions that you would like to make? Just, just briefly, Your Honor. Yes. Did he give you a reason as to why he canceled the appointment, Detective? He said he wanted to consult an attorney. Okay. And so, um, and based upon that, that was what you understood as to why he didn't come in for the interview. Yeah. Okay. And so, Your Honor, that would just be that our concern is that that information gets to his right to invoke counsel, and we don't want that to be negatively construed by the jury. So, is the defense is your? Do you have any objections to the question that the state has asked? My only objection would be that uh, regarding, I think it should be a little more tailored as to whether or not they had contact with him. They did, but nothing came of that, I think, would be, so that way it doesn't get to, he has to say he wanted to have an attorney present with him. All right, so do you have any objection to the witness testifying that your client did not show for the appointment? Um, I believe that that would be, that's a little vague, Your Honor, just that they did not have any that they not, I never had a conversation, I think, is because I don't want it to seem like he just didn't show, but there was a reason why he didn't show, which then leads to other. Well, isn't that solved by saying uh, whether or not he gave you a reason for not appearing? And then that's either yes or no. I, I feel like that leaves the, uh, for the jury as to what that reason is. <laughs> and then it has to be that he. Well, I don't think it's objectionable for the state to ask them to ask this witness if she 
I'm sorry, if she asked or if she made contact with any other people? And the answer would be, as she stated, she made contact with your client and that they talked on the phone or however they communicated, then what did, you know, what was the conversation about? I think she can testify that they made an appointment for him to come in. So up until that point, do you see anything objectionable? Up until that point, no, Your Honor. All right. Then the next question is going to be, did he come in? And that's either yes or no. And I think that's, I think if we limit the answer to, no, he did not come in. That's sufficient at that point. All right. Okay. So, so I'm saying he scheduled an appointment and then when they asked me if he came in, no. Did he vague, ultimately come in? Vague, vague, yeah. no. Okay. All right. So defense, are you uh, satisfied with that as being the answer? Yes, Your Honor. All right. So then uh, you're not allowed to go into the fact that Mr. Lemon called you and said, I want to consult an at attorney before I come in. You're just allowed to answer those specific questions. And then did he uh, show up for the appointment? That's either yes or no. There's no explanation to that. Okay. All right. Does anyone need a brief break? Now's the time to take it. I'm good. I'll take it real quick. All right. <laughs> All right. All right. For the jury. All right, everyone, please be seated. It state it's your witness. Uh, Sergeant, um, did you uh, attempt to get in touch with anybody else during your investigation? Yes, I attempted to contact the suspect. And um, what purpose were you trying to contact uh, the defendant for? Uh, to offer him an opportunity to give me his side of the story. Okay. And um, did you? Uh, Schedule uh, an interview with the defendant? We did. Okay. And um, so you made successful contact with him? Yes, we spoke on the phone. Okay. And um, was that interview ever conducted? No. Um, nothing further, Your Honor. Defense? May I proceed, Your Honor? Yes. Okay. Um, Sergeant. Sergeant now? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> And uh, I want to make sure that you get your correct title. I know you've earned it, so I want to make sure they call you the right thing. Um, regarding your investigation, um, typically when you have an uh, out-of-county uh, or out-of-the-city um, investigation, what's the process that you go through? So depending on um, who's where, in this uh, particular case, the victim was um, out of the city. Um, so I have to rely on other, um, other agencies resources to help. And so once when, whereabouts, I guess, I guess, when did you actually get noticed that this was a case that was assigned to you? Do you recall? The date? I, I mean, yeah. I know it was 2019. Uh, I couldn't tell you what month. Now, in any case that you have, do you prepare a report or a, um, some kind of um, um, something to help refresh your memory later on if you need to. Yes. And um, what is that typically called? A uh, prosecution guide. Okay. May I approach witness, Your Honor? Yes. I'm going to hand to you with a mark as uh, State's Exhibit Number Five. I'm sorry, Defense Exhibit. I'm so sorry. <clears throat> and what Defense Exhibit Number is it? Five. I'm sorry, three. I don't know why I said five. Confusing. <laughs> Yeah, this is my prosecution guide. Okay. And um, you recognize it to be the one that you prepared as part of the investigation in this case? Yes. And whenever you do that, uh, you go through, and you've talked about it here, you go through the statements that you've already received to determine if there's any consistencies or inconsistencies. Correct. Okay. Um, in regards to... Did you ever determine where, what the location was that this allegedly took place? 
the address was the address that he was, um, I believe that they were still living at. Uh, our dash. Okay. And within that address, was there a location where it supposedly took place? Like within the household? Yes. Um, Objection, Your Honor, calls for hearsay. It's not offered for the truth. Defense. That's not offered for the truth of the matter asserted, Your Honor. So I don't believe it's hearsay. All right. That'll be sustained. Did you make a determination as to with any, where it was within the house that this took place? And that's just, yeah, did you make that determination? Let me, let me refresh uh, my memory okay. here. I know the report from Harris County talks about it being. Objection, Your Honor. Hearsay as to what the report from Harris County says. All right. That will be sustained as to what the, the report says. Um, you yourself, did you make a determination based upon what you had observed and read as to where it had taken place? No. You did not? No. Okay. I don't think so. And um, <clears throat> I guess whenever you receive that initial report and the forensic interview, do you, do you watch those one right after another? Like you watch the... You read the statement, then you watch the video, and then you make a determination of what you should do with your case? Yeah, it's a little bit more than that. So, okay. well, Tell me a little bit about what you do. So I'll get the preliminary report. Um, like I said, it's, it's usually not very descriptive um, by design. We don't want to talk to children about very specific details out in the field. Um, so I kind of get the idea of uh, the victim, her age, um, and, and what specifically she's saying happened. Uh, so then I watched the forensic interview. Um, of course, I'm going to compare what was said originally to that um, for consistency. And so I guess in order to do that, you kind of have to read them and watch them pretty close to each other so you don't miss something. Sure. Okay. Um, and you stated that there was consistencies between what she told the officers originally and the child safe or the forensic interview. Yeah. I'm talking about what happened to her. Okay. I think you're talking about where it happened. Um, I, I don't recall that, but when I, when she talks about what specifically happened to her body, she's very consistent and she's very detailed. Okay. So regarding an act taking place, she was consistent about the act taking place. Correct. Okay. Now, you would agree with me that sometimes these other details will help others make a determination as to whether or not somebody's credible in what they're saying. Objection, speculation. <clears throat> Overall. How long have you been, uh, well, a detective formally in, in the working these kind of cases? Four years. Okay. And so you've handled quite a few of them? Yes. And so you've stated that you're looking for consistencies to help you determine if somebody's credible. Part of it. Part of it, I mean... I mean, trauma plays a big role of how things are presented from the victim. Uh, there's a lot of variables and little little pieces can be out of order. Um, very common with trauma. I mean, they're reliving the worst day of their life. So you're looking for consistencies, also some inconsistencies that maybe have an explanation. Sure. Okay. Um, but you're looking to compare the statements, correct? To see if there's anything that you maybe a red flag. Hey, this could be a problem. Correct. Yeah. I mean, if it's completely opposite of what she says happened, then yeah, I've got a problem with that. And if somebody were to say a location was different from where, from where it took place in one statement and another, that wouldn't be a red flag to you. Not when it involves a six to nine year old. Okay. So in that regards, a six to nine year old, Everyone that gives a statement, no matter how inconsistent it might be, you believe that to be credible. Objection but you're talking about specifics of time and place and a six and nine year old. Excuse me. When one of the attorneys makes an objection, yeah, I know people are whispering, but when one attorney makes an objection, just stop speaking yes. so I can make a ruling. All right. Is there an objection? Uh, objection. Your Honor calls for speculation. All right. That'll be overruled. You can go ahead and answer. 
Uh, and now I forgot we were quite. That's okay. Yeah, I understand. Uh, so, in regards to your experience, uh, you said six and nine year olds. That is not an issue for you. Inconsistencies. Is that correct? Yeah. And what I was talking about is when it talks about time and place. Uh, it's very common for these kids to not know how old they were or what month it was or what grade they were in, especially if it's something that has happened multiple times. Um, they also might not know where they were living at the time. If they change houses, if they stay with dad, sometimes if they stay with mom, sometimes very common for six to nine year olds. So then would it be correct to say then with somebody in that age group, age range, they make an outcry. You're pretty much going to forward over the DA's office and let them figure it out. If they're consistent, yeah. And even based upon what your last statement was, if they're somewhat inconsistent because of that age range, Again, there's an explanation. Again, consistent about the experience of what happened to them. Little things about time and place. Uh, again, it's very common with trauma to not be able to recollect that uh, in perfect chronological order. But if there's details missing or changed in different statements, that could be an issue, right? Like what? Uh, I mean, any number of things it happened in a house or it happened uh, in another house. It happened in a room or it, where the person came to me or I went to the person. Those are two different things. Right. She also said it happened my, I guess, my multiple question, times. My question Could've before you go for it. All the places. My question to you, though, is whether or not that would be a concern for you. No. Okay. And because of the age range, you feel like that's something that can be explained yes okay so typically when cases and normally within the san antonio police department somebody within that age range comes and makes an outcry whether they're completely consistent or not you're gonna go forward on the case yeah i mean she has no nothing to gain to come forward on this and actually more to lose by coming forward were you aware that there was a child support um Filings made prior to the allegation coming out? Child support? No, it was not. Okay. I have no further questions, John. Any other questions? Uh, nothing based on that, Your Honor. All right. Is this witness excused or subject for recall? Excuse from the state. Excuse, Your Honor. All right, the rule has been invoked. You're not allowed to discuss your testimony with anyone. The only persons you're allowed to speak to are attorneys for the state or the defense. And if you'll leave the exhibit with the court reporter, please. State, call your next witness. You are at this time, the state rests. All right. All right, ladies and gentlemen, I know we have been breaking a lot. Uh, but I'm going to have you all line up outside at 3 p.m., there are a couple of matters that I need to take up. All right. So you've heard what I've said. Remember my instructions. No thinking about it. No discussing it with each other. No investigation. Everything that you need to know about this case is to come from inside the courtroom. Does everyone understand? All right. Please stand. All right, for the jury. The defense called Amanda Lewis. All right, you've previously been sworn in. If you'll state your name for the record, spell it, keep your voice up so that the members of the jury and the court reporter can hear. Amanda Lewis, A-M-A-N-D-A-L-E-W-I-S. All right, defense. Thank you, Your Honor. Miss Lewis, um, how do you know Wardell Lemon? Um, that's my boyfriend. And how long have you and Mr. Lemon dated? For about 13, 14 years. Miss Lewis, do you have any children? Uh, I have Madison and I have three other children. How old are they? Uh, Madison's 16. My oldest is 23. I have a 22 and I also have like a 17 year old. Okay. Do you have any children with Wardell? No. Mm -hmm. And who is Madison's father? Justin Keeney. Were you and Mr. Keeney ever married? No, sir. 
Um, did you and Mr. Keeney ever live together? Yes, we did. Do you remember how what years those were? Um, from the time Madison was born until about 2005 or six, or I don't know the years exactly, no, um, but a good three or four years. Okay. Do you recall what year uh, Madison was born? 2004, six. <laughs> you not recall? Um, with four kids, no. <laughs> okay. <laughs> June 18th, 2007. No, I do not know the year right offhand. <laughs> um, let me ask you this. Um, how were things between you and Justin? Uh, um, while while you were living together with um Amanda, I'm sorry with uh with Madison. I think I'm trying to protect um, her relevance. Overall, how were things to, at the house between you and Madison and Justin? Um, they were fine in the beginning. Um, Justin worked at a hotel. You know, we were young. It we fought a lot. Uh, you know, he would want to go out and drink him while I had a baby at home. Things like that. <laughs> At, at, at a certain point, did you all no longer continue to date? Yes, that's correct. And what happened after that relationship ended? Um, you know, he went um, for child support and then I was put on that and that made like when I wasn't paying child support or something, it just turned ugly. So I'm going to stop you right there. Um, at that point, do you recall what year this was? 2008, 9, I don't know. Okay. Now, you'd agree with me based upon what you remember. You're not very good with years. I am not, no. Okay. Well, and um, in that regard, um, when did you and uh, Wardell begin dating? Oh, geez. Um, I guess how long after the relationship ended with Justin? Um, I was currently kind of still with Justin as me and Wardell were talking. Um, when I broke up with Justin and was kicked out of the house with a baby, I went to stay with Wardell or to proceed that. And so you then began living with Wardell. That's correct. Okay. And at that point, when you're living with Wardell, did you have Madison with you for some time? Yeah, I did. Every other weekend, I had her on a custody order. Okay. Um, So during the time she wasn't with you every other weekend, she was with her dad. That's correct. Whenever she would come and stay with you on the weekend, would you see her? Yeah. Okay. I would um, have to take off work to stay with Madison. Now, when you talk about work, where where were you working at that time? I work at Frollo's Pizza um, out by the Dominion. How long have you worked there? I have worked there for 10 years. And... So during the time when she was visiting you, how would you coordinate it so you either um, were at work or not at work when she came by? Correct. Um, it was she was not allowed to come unless I was there. Um, so I would talk to my boss and tell her that I would need off every other weekend because Madison would be coming. Um, and that Friday, usually I would work in the morning or we'd go pick her up from school. Wardell and I would pick her up from school or they would drop her off to us. Whenever she would come stay with y'all, what kind of things would you do? Um, we really like bowling. Um, we would go to University Bowl probably every weekend, if not every other weekend. Um, we would do friends barbecues for the Spurs game. Um, we would hang out with uh, Shauna, my friend Shauna from Frollo's, who has a daughter, Madison. Uh, we would just, you know, do things at home. Cook, bake, um, just, you know, hang out with your daughter. What kind of, what, what was your relationship like with Madison? I thought it was pretty good. I mean, were y'all close? Yeah, very close. And what was her relationship like with Wardell? I would say they were very close as well. What did you observe about how they got along with each other? Madison looked up to him like a dad. What gave you that impression? Other than her saying it? Mm hmm um, just the way she, I mean, she was always happy. She would always be like me. She would call him buddy. 
So she would say, you know, are me and you and buddy going to go bowling or me and you and buddy this, or can my buddy take me here? Or can buddy do this? Or, you know, me and buddy are going to play basketball outside or. Why would you call him buddy? Um, well, <laughs> when she was little and Justin, um, didn't know Wardell, like he didn't want her around Wardell. So, uh, she would call him buddy. So Justin wouldn't find out until eventually, you know, he figured that out. Um, but I don't know, probably cause that's her buddy. They spent a lot of time hanging out together. Who, sir? Uh, I'm sorry. Wardell and, and uh, Madison. Yes. Yes. And I. Okay. Um, you trusted Wardell to be around your daughter. Definitely a hundred percent. And did they ever play video games together that you were oh, yeah. Yep. Was that a normal thing? It was. Yeah. We're big video people, um, video game people. So yeah, she would like to play Forza. That would be a thing. Cause she could drive. Um, I think we had a Wii at, maybe at the time that she would also play. Um, I would say, yeah. May I approach the witness, John? Yes. was marked as states exhibits four through nine. Council those states exhibits, sir. Defense exhibits, I'm sorry. That's defense exhibits four through nine. Can you um you recognize those? Yes, I do. And what are they? There are pictures of when Madison was at the house, or this is at my job. Um, this is at University Bowl, and this is the Madisons at outside, plus my Madison playing with Wardell. Are those true and accurate uh, copies of photographs that were taken? Mm, yes, sir. Did they appear to have been altered in any way? No, sir. Okay, and what's state's exhibit? I'm sorry, defense exhibit number nine. Six, eight, seven. Where's nine? To, okay. Um, it's a folder that they used to draw in, or Madison has all of her drawings that Wardell likes to draw. So Madison picked that up and she also liked to do. So, is that something they shared together? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so, would they both draw on that book? Um, yeah. I mean, I don't know that this one's Wardell's, but I mean, yeah, she would. This is her drawing with Buddy. Yes. Okay. And that's that's the actual one that they drove the she drew in. Yes, mm -hmm. this is from the house. Okay. Mm -hmm. Your Honor, offering of it states exhibits four through nine, and I'll tender to council. Yes, okay, you might want to say that's a face swap. <laughs> oh, <thanks. laughs> Any objection? Um, here. Uh, no objection to um, defense exhibits four through eight. Um, you'll give me a minute to look. Nine is a big binder. All right, then states exhibits, I'm sorry, defense exhibits four, five, six, seven, and eight are admitted without objection. May I publish the jury at this time? Yes. Um, Your Honor, may I take the witness on a brief board hire? Uh, yes. Okay, Ms. Lewis, um, or I'm sorry, Defense Exhibit 9 is this big binder. Um, Whose binder was this? Madison's. Okay. Or it was ours. It was around the house. She picked it up, asked to draw on it, of course. You want to may I approach? Yes. <clears throat> okay. Whose handwriting is this in the front? That would be Wardell's. That's Wardell's. Yeah. Okay. Um. I don't even 
don't know what that is other than that. Okay, excuse me. Just wait till the question is asked of you. Yes. Whose footprint is this? Madison's. Okay. Did you see her make this? I'm sure I did. So did Ma it, it, your opinion that Madison made all of these? Madison did make all those. I believe that's it. What about that? We're done. And who are whose phone numbers are these? Um, I think those are for me. Um, some of the, I don't know. Those are phone numbers okay. we know. That looks like Widow's mom's dad's number, sister. <laughs> Your Honor, I, I would just object to there's multiple items within what's marked as Defense Exhibit 9. Um, some of them, you know, the ones that are purportedly from the defendant, I would object to lack of authentication, um, relevance. Um, otherwise, I don't have objections to Madison's drawings, um, but I, I think they need to be labeled. Right, defense. Your Honor, um, it's been testified to that these are some as a, a activity that they did together, um, so there would be uh, things from from Wardell as well as from Madison. So I believe it's in context to give both of those. I will label this separately, um, just to make sure that it's clear on Let's the see record. Defense Exhibit Number Nine, please. Yes, Your Honor, and I will label the one of the items that's an inlet as this Defense Exhibit Number Ten. Right, and with regards to the part of defense exhibit number nine that has the defendant's parents' phone number in it. Can I ask the group that, Your Honor? All right, any objections to number 10? Um, Your Honor, I, I, only if, if, can I approach, Your Honor? Any objection to number 10? We're going to clarify a couple of things on the same round. Yes. Thank you. Um, the what's marked is now as defensive is that it's been, what do you, do you recognize this? Um, yes. Um, that's a buddy. This is for you. Dad, I love you so much. That's Madison's note to Cordell. And this is all of it together is what, do you know? Um, it's a card. This is something she made for Cordell. This is a card that she made for Wardell. It's supposed to open like this. And that's the message. This is just the front of the card. I gotcha. Okay. And so this is the actual one that she made? Yeah. And it hasn't been altered in any way no. to your knowledge? No. Okay. Once again, I'd offer an evidence. State exhibit, I'm sorry, Defense Exhibit 10. All right. State, I'll hear your objection to 10. Your Honor, I object to authentication. We don't know when it was made, where it was made, under what circumstances it, it may have been made by Madison, if she observed her personally making it. All right. States uh, defense exhibit number 10 is admitted over objection. And if I could have parties approach with regards to defense exhibit number nine. And may I publish number 10, Your Honor? Yes. So Madison and Wardell had a lot of activities that they worked on together. Yes, that's correct. All three of us. Okay. And now a couple things I wanted to ask you about. You don't have the same relationship with your daughter that you used to. That's correct. At one point, did that relationship change? As soon as I got behind on child support payments. When when did that occur? Um, in the winter time, when um, the restaurant was slow, and I wasn't making full payments, Justin wasn't getting his money. Um, in the beginning, I paid him directly versus paying it through the state. So the only way to pick up Madison was to make sure I paid that three hundred and fifty or one hundred and fifty-five dollars every two weeks. 
It was paid to his mom before I picked her up. So would you, would mom, his mom be there at the location? Um, to drop off the money, not necessarily because we would pick her up from school. We would then go in their neighborhood. I would go through their front door and leave money on either underneath their rug or inside their home. During this time, you and Wardell living together, um, you're bringing income working as a wait as a wait- waitress. Mm-hmm. What kind of income was Wardell bringing in? Um, that's where he had t-shirts um, with his cousin Vaughn. They have a printing t-shirt business. And we also made uh, shirts for my job as well. Was that a regular thing? Yeah, it was. Mm-hmm. Is it still a regular thing? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, despite not seeing your daughter for the reasons you've discussed, why have you not had any contact with your daughter in the last few years? Well, even times that I make contact, it's either I'm blocked, uh, they don't respond. Just, there's even with a court order, there's no re- response. So have you had to get a court order in order to have contact with her? I'm sure I could, but I have not. No, I'm saying like the court order from like visitation rights and stuff like that because he's not holding up his end of visitation. So therefore, I wasn't able to see her at any time. Just when Justin decided for me to see her is when I could see her. When they moved to Houston, how often did you see Madison? Barely ever. What? Why weren't you able to see her or why didn't you see her more? Because they would never come to town and I would have to go to Houston to see her or they would be out of town or not responding to any of my texts. In regards to the orders that were in place, when he moved her to Houston, did that concern you? Well, yeah, because then I definitely wasn't about to see her because it's even further away. Some may ask, why didn't you fight harder to try to keep her within Bear County? Because that's my daughter. Of course, I want to see her. I mean. But why did you think that there wasn't more of a fight for you in order to keep her here so she wouldn't be moved to Houston? Well, I mean, I looked into that. That was more money. Like, I mean, I have. I couldn't get a lawyer to help me. And he has a lawyer through his parents or himself. Were you aware that he married and had um, other children? Oh, yeah. Um, did you ever meet his um, his new wife or, I guess, yeah. Madison's stepmother? Yes. Uh, on few or? Um, a few times. Uh, she texts. She's also dropped Madison off at the house um, without Justin knowing he was out of town. Before you go any further, how did you know that she knew he didn't know? She told me. Okay. And two, why would that be necessary? Because Justin didn't want me to see her. And the only way for Madison to see me would either be from Justin's mom, because Justin's mom would either drop her off or I would be able to go see her, meet them at Whataburger, meet them anywhere for an hour or two to see them while Justin was out of town. Because she would want me to have contact with my daughter. Are you aware they moved back to the San Antonio area? I am aware. Have you tried to reach out and visit or see your daughter since they moved back here? I have um, reached out to try to contact Madison or anybody in the same thing, either I'm blocked or just not responded to. Now, prior to the allegations coming out, was there any paper, there was any uh, criminal, I'm sorry, um, court filings that you were made aware of uh, in regards to um, child support before the outcry came out? One more time. Was any <laughs> was there anything filed with the courts prior to the allegations coming out? No, sir. Were you aware that there was something filed near the time that the allegations came out? Um, yes. Um, like when they filed for this whole thing. Mm-hmm. Um, I was here on a child support case and it was filed on the same day. And? My child support was lowered on that day. Justin was here, and then that's when they filed. I assume, I say, filed on the same day on the paperwork. Okay. Now, let me ask you this. Um, When you and Wardell first got together, was Justin pretty upset? 100% yes. (laughs) Um, 
was there ever a time that you received messages from Justin regarding you going to jail being regarding child support? Yes. 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 Objection here, sorry. No, overall. Does it bother you that you don't have the same relationship with your daughter that you used to? Yes, it does. Some may ask why you've been put in a position where you have to believe your daughter or your boyfriend. Yeah. How have you come to the conclusion you have regarding what did or didn't occur? I just know that I was there for most of these parts and I believe him because I can see it with my own eyes. I mean, I saw it. I've seen how she's been raised with us when we're all three together, how she's acted. And I don't believe it one bit. I have no doubt that that didn't happen. I'll pass the witness, sir. State. Yes, Your Honor. Okay, Ms. Lewis, let's go back. Um, you have, you said three other children? That's correct. Um, so were they over at the house when Madison? No, ma'am. Uh, where were they? They weren't in the state. Okay. Um, did you have custody of them? or One of them, my old, two other children were not custody of me no just tyler but he was he was with my mom in virginia this whole time um you testified early that earlier that justin broke up with you and kicked you and a baby out of the house so you went to live with wardell um is that is that baby madison that is madison so you're saying that you when you first moved out from Justin, Madison was with you. That's correct. How long was she with you as a baby? Um, I don't know, on and off. Um, she mainly stayed with me until they got that child support order when she was like four or five years old. Okay. And that child support order, to be clear, you you agreed to that. It was an agreed order. Yeah, to see my kid every other weekend, it was agreed order. Okay. Yes. And um, you're aware that there was a child custody part of that agreement. Yes. And you're aware that if you didn't do that, that they could file for an enforcement of that. It was right. the right. Yeah. So, and when you say baby, how old was Madison? I don't know. I'd say under, under five. Okay. Um, does uh, would would it sound right that she was around three or four when you signed over? Probably so. Right? Yes. No. Okay. Are you aware that? Um, Accusations of drug use have come up again about you. We object, Your Honor, to relevance. All right, that'll be overruled. I'm yes. sorry, what was your answer? Uh, yes. Um, when was the first time you were aware of that? Um. Probably the first custody issue we had. Which was when? When that first custody came in, uh, maybe three or four, like you said. Um, he would just be like, you know, my daughter's not going to stay with you because you're with a drug dealer or you're doing drugs or something. Okay. Um,
So um, how often, so is it your testimony that you never left Madison alone with Wardell? There is a few times I've left her. Um, um, maybe once or twice. Maybe once or twice. Um, under what circumstances? I was um, maybe going to, <sighs> really don't know. Um, I don't know what the, like not alone to where it's overnight or any of that. Maybe if I ran to the gas station in the street and came back at that. Okay. I so, mean, she never spent the night alone with Wardell. Okay. If you are a hundred percent sure that Wardell would never do anything like this, why didn't you feel comfortable leaving her alone with Wardell? Well, why would I need to? It was my weekend to babysit her. So you testified earlier that you had every other weekend off. That's correct. So if Madison had testified that in fact you would actually take her to sit at work while you were working. Would that be incorrect? No, ma'am. That would be correct. Okay. Be so if, if Madison testified that there were also days when you would go to work and you would, you would leave her with Bordell, would that be incorrect? No, ma'am. Okay. Um. And it's your opinion that Madison saw the defendant like a dad. Yes, ma'am. Why didn't you call the detective back when she called you about this case? Honestly, the first time that I saw that, I did not contact her. Um, by that time that I did notice, she left a voicemail and responded to uh, Wardell had already talking to her. And he said that we I'm were judge there. honor to hearsay. Sustained. Um, if you were so sure of Wardell's innocence, wouldn't you want to tell the detective that? Oh, well, yeah, but not without a lawyer. I mean, I don't know what the detective is calling me to say. Why would you need a lawyer? Why would a detective be calling me? I have no idea. I mean, I didn't know what she was calling for. Well, you're aware that there were allegations that your boyfriend had sexually assaulted your daughter, right? Dustin put that in a text a few times, yes. Okay, and so, and you're wondering why a detective is calling you? That's the question. I mean, no, I knew that it was for Madison after the fact that, you know, Wardell got the same phone call and from Detective Brian. So why didn't you want to talk to Detective Brian? It's not that I didn't want to. I was going to when I got the lawyer, whoever I decided that I needed. Excuse to Excuse me just one second. Could you all come forward, please? All right, State. Okay. Um... Wardell, you said, had a t-shirt business? Yes, ma'am. Um, how much did he get paid as part of that business? I'm pretty sure it's by the t-shirt order. I really don't know that part. Okay. And you said uh, your work, so Frollo's gets the t-shirts from them? Yes, ma'am. Okay. And how long has that been in place? Um, getting t-shirts from, from, from yeah. us? Uh, since I worked there in 2015. Okay. So or 13, sorry. Okay. 13. So for 10 years. Yeah. I mean, um, I still make them this day. Okay. Um, what other uh, businesses do they make t-shirts for? Uh, I don't know whoever they gets called. I know there's some, I don't know. It's just different businesses that contact them on Facebook or just contact them in general to make other little printed shirts or to a hundred to, you know, 400 shirts. It just depends on who that person is. So does he have regular working hours? Um, not necessarily for t-shirts. Um, it was during the day. I mean, during the week, not like a set nine to five as me, I go to work at four to 11. That's not a you know time for those shirt shops. It's just when they were able there to make shirts. Okay. Um, Is, um, are y'all, um, 
How's the division of resources? Are y'all pretty 50-50 as far as income? Um, Who who pays most of the bills? Wardell. Wardell pays most of the bills. Mm -hmm. Um, As in like rent, car, insurance, I pay electric, water. Okay. You know, we split food. um, and, And your testimony is that you... You weren't even able to make child support payments as is, right? Um, not the full amount. I did make child support payment, but not the full amount. Okay. Um, you said that you, you would see Wardell and Madison playing video games. Where in the house would they play video games? In the game room. Um, it's an upstairs two-story. Um, like, this is Madison's room. This is our room. This would be the game room. Okay. It all connects. Like, so where, okay. So it's a two story. Yes. Okay. Mm-hmm. So where is your bedroom? If you go up the stairs to the left is ours to the right is Madison across from the hallway. And then the game room would be in the middle where the stairs face this way on this side. Okay. Um, and I'm guessing the kitchen's probably downstairs. Downstairs. Correct. Um, how many hours would they play video games? Not very many. I mean, uh, an hour or two or, you know, whenever he would be playing video games at night, you know, she would want to play something. So, you know, we'd play Forza real quick, let her drive around Forza World, if anybody knows what Forza is. Um, okay. So not very long. What about ago. Grand Theft Auto? Uh, Grand Theft Auto was a big one, yes. Okay. Um, and... What's the furniture in the game room? Mm-hmm. Or what was it? Um, it's still the same. <laughs> uh, two couches this way, this way, two TVs, and a desk. Okay. And so typically where would uh, Wardell and Madison and yourself sit? All three on the couch right here. Okay. Um, did you see um, Madison sit on Wardell's lap? Several times. Was that a pretty common thing? Yeah. I mean, what kid doesn't sit on somebody's lap? Did she sit on your lap? Yeah. Okay. Um, you said you would go bowling. Uh-huh. Um, how late would y'all be out bowling? Um, probably till about nine or ten. Okay. So, um, never till three a.m. I don't think it's open till three a.m. Okay. I mean, never past like midnight, honestly. So it's it's your testimony that once Madison left San Antonio, they blocked you. Um. Yes, that's right. Okay. Um. But it's also your testimony that she loved Wardell like a father. Right. So why would she block you? Well, I don't think she's the only one that's blocking people. I just said I was blocked. I didn't really say Madison blocked me. Okay. So did, did Madison block you? I don't know. Okay. Did you reach out to Madison? Yes. When did you reach out to Madison? Um, her birthday was last week. She was 16. I said, hi, I missed you. Happy birthday. And then immediately I was blocked. Okay. Um, did you wish her happy birthday on her 15th birthday? Yes. Did you ever attempt to talk to Madison about the allegations? Um, if I had a chance to, but just, I haven't had contact with her since then. Okay. Um, is it safe to say that Pretty much all the information you have about this case is from Wardell. All the information that I have from this case? Yes. I have from my own eyes. Okay. But as far as what the allegations are. Correct. Yes. Okay. Or the attorney. Okay. Um, so you're aware that the allegation is that he placed his hand underneath her underwear onto her vagina. Correct. Um, how many conversations have you had with uh, Wardell's attorney? 
Um, today or ever? I need a few, a couple, I, a couple times. Every time we come down here, there's a conversation. Okay. So um, you knew more or less what the questions were going to be. Yes. Are you aware that Madison said she didn't tell because she was scared to tell you? I didn't know that. That she was scared you wouldn't believe her? I mean, I can't talk. I haven't talked to her in six years, probably. (laughs) Are you aware that she was scared that she would run into you here in San Antonio? I was hoping she would. Did you see her today? I did. Where? In the hallway. I'll pass the witness. Defense? Just briefly, Your Honor. How did you feel to, s- to see your daughter in the hallway? I mean, I was happy, you know, sad. It was too. <laughs> um, have you ever had an opportunity? Well, something was made up about or brought up about a um, a spring break visit that uh, Madison had. That's correct. Um, or any other time frame where she may have stayed with people other than you. Was there ever any occasions that that occurred? Yes. And uh, who would she have stayed with? Shauna. Shauna who? Uh, Stevens, which is a friend from my work. How long have you known Shauna? The 10 plus years from Frollo's. And does he, she have any children? She does. She has two. And what are their names? Uh, Alyssa Stevens and uh, Madison Stevens. So there was Madison and Madison? Yes. <laughs> Did they hang out together? Yeah, all the time. They were in that picture that's over there. May I approach Sharon? Yes. That's exhibit number eight. Is that the picture you're referring to? That's correct. <laughs> the two girls holding his leg. Yep. No, it's both Madisons. That is both Madisons. I mean, was that typical behavior for yep. the Madisons yep. with Mordell? Yep. Happy as can be. Attached to him. Nothing further, Yarn. Anything else? Yes, briefly. So how long did you leave her with Shauna? Um, just why I went to work. It was like a, a shift. Um, we'd pick her up that night or she would spend the night one night and I'd pick her up the next day. So you felt comfortable leaving her with Shauna, but not Wardell? Yes. No further questions. That, that time that you left her with Shauna, was Wardell available? Um, I'm sure he was, it's just, you know, Shauna's mom had a pool and Madison was there. So best friends want to hang out. That's the reason. And you were asked, you felt comfortable leaving her with Shauna, but not Wardell. Can you explain that? What she just said? Yes. Um, I don't know what that means, but I mean, I wasn't uncomfortable leaving her with Woodrow at any point, but I mean, she wanted to go over there and yeah, you know, she can swim while I was playing at work. She didn't have to worry about, you know, staying at home, doing nothing besides, you know, playing video games and doing inside things. She could actually go outside and be with her friend. So let me ask you this. If there were ever a time that that would have come up where, hey, look, I got to leave her home with Wardell for an extended period of time. Would you have done so? 100%. Still do it to this day. Nothing further. Any other questions? Uh, Yes. Um, You would still do it to this day, even though by your own admission, 
the only facts or allegations you know of this case are from Wardell. That's correct. Nothing further. Nothing further, Your Honor. All right, is this witness excused or subject to recall? Excuse, Your Honor. Subject to recall. All right, the rule has been invoked. What that means is you can't discuss your testimony with anyone. The only persons you're allowed to speak to are attorneys for the state of the defense. Do you understand? Yes, ma'am. All right, thank you. You can step down. And if you could make sure you pass that exhibit yes, to the ma'am. court reporter. Yes. Defense, call your next witness. Defense, we call Shauna Stevens. All right, can you raise your right hand? Do you solemnly swear or affirm the testimony you give will be the truth and nothing but the truth? So help you, God? I do. All right, you can lower your hand, have a seat. Uh, just make sure you keep your voice up so the court reporter and uh, the jury can hear. Okay. If you'll state your name for the record and please spell it. Shauna Stevens, S-H-A-U-N-A, Stevens, S-T-E-P-H-E-N-S. All right, defense. Thank you, Your Honor. Ms. Stevens, do you know Amanda Lewis? I do. Do you know Ward Lemon? I do. How do you know Amanda Lewis? I met her working at Frollo's. And how long have you worked together? We worked together for about three years before my dad had a stroke. And then? And then after that, we were just remained friends. Okay. Um, and so you started off as coworkers and are continuing to be friends. Yes. Okay. And your friendship as a whole, how long do you think you've been friends? Uh, Ten years. Now, let me ask you, um, how do you know Wardell Lemon? Through Mandy. And is that what you call Amanda Lewis? It is. Sorry. Um, do you have any children? I do. How many? I have three. And how old are they? Uh, 23, 21, and 15. And what are their names? Alyssa, Samantha, Madison. Now, when you um, became friends with Amanda, did you know that she had a daughter named Madison as well? Yes. They, that Was that kind of a bonding factor for the two of you? Yes. Did your children ever play together? Yes. My youngest, Madison, and Madison uh, became friends. And uh, what kind of stuff? Well, I guess, let me backtrack. Did y'all ever hang out together as families doing activities? Yes. What kind of stuff? Um, playing video games, Littlest Pet Shops, uh, coloring. Um, the typical indoor stuff. Um, did you ever go to each other's houses? Yes. Um, so you would go to where, where Wardell and Amanda live? Yes, that was the majority of the time. Did, did they ever come to where you live? Uh, just a couple times. Okay. Um, was there ever an occasion where you watched uh, Madison at your house? Yes. Uh, do you remember when that was? Uh, I don't remember the exact time frame. Um, I know the girls, I took them swimming. Do you remember like, not the time frame, but was there anything, the, the time of year it might've been? Spring. Okay. Um, were you aware that, I guess, um, had you ever met Amanda's, um, well, Madison's father, Justin? I have not met him personally, no. Um, did you ever know that there was ongoing things between them in the courts? I did. Um, would Amanda talk to you about these things? Yes. Did they cause her any stress that you observed? A lot of stress. Okay. Um, how did you observe Madison, Amanda's Madison, get along with Wardell when you ever you had these activities together? They were great. I mean, they played. The, um, I mean, nothing ever out of the ordinary. They would laugh, have a good time. Does she ever seem scared of him? Never. I mean, now, obviously, most of these, well, tell me, were these occasions that you observed them in public or at the household? At the house. Okay. Um, so it would just be, I guess, who would be at the house during this time? Uh, it would always be Mandy, uh, Wardell, me, uh, and some of the time, my daughter. Uh, and which daughter are you referring to? Madison. Okay. And would the other Madison be there too? Yes. Uh, was she there often at their house or not often? No. Okay. Um, what kind of things would they do at Wardell and uh, Amanda's house? They would play in a girl's room with the castles, toys, 
my Madison and her Madison would. That was, and then on the iPad, they would play on the iPad. How did your Madison ever have any interactions with with Wardell? Yes. And anything about those interactions cause you any concern? Never. Um, did you ever get any feelings from Amanda that she had concerns about Wardell being either alone with her Madison or any concerns about how he treated her? Never. You're aware of the allegations that are here today. I am. And um, based upon your experience, um, do you believe those to be true? I do not. Okay. Now let me ask, and, and I'm talking about your experience in observing Wardell and Madison. Um, when you first heard about the allegations, what was your reaction? Shocked. And why was it shocked? Because um, I'd never, I have three daughters and I'd never seen anything to lead me to believe that. So just, it was shocking. Mm. Where when you first became friends with Amanda, do you remember how old Madison was? Her Madison would have been around five or six. Okay. Um, was she, to your knowledge, still living here in San Antonio? Yes. Were you aware whenever she moved away from San Antonio? Yes. How did how did that affect uh, Amanda whenever she moved away? Greatly. She was depressed for a long time. Um, from what you observed, did she try to make contact with her daughter? She did, um, through the stepmother. Were there times that she did see her whenever they lived in Houston? And what I'm saying in that question is, uh, whether it was in Houston or San Antonio, she saw Madison at some point when they were living in Houston. I can't recall. Okay. I'll pass witness, Shauna. State. Yes, Your Honor. Um, Shauna, um, you uh, you were asked to testify on the defendant's behalf. Yes. Correct? And um, have you been in the courthouse all day? Uh, this afternoon. Okay. And were you outside with um, Amanda earlier this afternoon? When I got here, yes. And um, did you watch a portion of this trial on a YouTube feed with Amanda? Um, I was told that she was supposed to have it off. And that was all I know. And were you present when it was played? I was for about 20 seconds. So that's all you saw? Yeah. Okay. Um, and now there, there was testimony that um, uh, Amanda would ask you to uh, care for um, Madison uh, sometimes while she was at work, correct? Um, how often would that happen? I only did it twice. Okay. And um, how long would you uh, watch Madison for? I'd say around four to six hours. So it wasn't very long. It was evening. As she worked evenings, bar, uh, waiting tables. Why wouldn't, um, if you're aware, why wouldn't Amanda leave uh, Madison with Wardell while she was at work? Justin was not letting her at all. In order for Amanda to see Madison, she had to be with her the entire time. Okay. And are you aware that there are times that Amanda testified to that she did leave uh, Madison with Wardell? I'm not aware of what she testified to. Okay. Um, do you know of any times when Amanda would leave Wardell at home alone? No. Okay. Um, and you said that when you would watch Madison, um, y'all would play video games together. Is that right? On the iPad, I didn't, but our daughters did. Okay. Um, do you know what kinds of games they would play? Um, I don't recall. It's been too long. I just know it was on the iPad. Okay. Um, and you said you've never met Justin, correct? Correct. And um, have you ever met his uh, his current wife, Linda? One time. And have you spoken to her um, since these uh, allegations came out? No, sir. Um, have you talked to Justin or Madison since his allegations came? No, sir. Okay. So it, it'd be correct to say that all of what you know about these allegations come from either Amanda or Wardell. Is that correct? That would be correct. Okay. Um,
And you said that um, you have three daughters, is that right? I do. And you've seen them interact with a defendant? Yes. Have you ever left them alone with a defendant? Yes. Okay. Uh, how many times? Many times. And have they been left alone with a defendant or have you just left them at the defendant's house with Amanda? Both. Okay. <clears throat> and um would uh how often would you or you and your family um go out with the defendant amanda and uh Matt? there was no going out it was just hanging out at the house okay um so you never went bowling with any of them i did not know okay. right. we'll pass the witness your honor i think probably honor all right, is this witness excused or subject to recall? Excuse, Your Honor. All right, the rule has been invoked. What that means is you can't discuss your testimony with anyone. Uh, you're only allowed to speak to attorneys for the state or the defense. Do you understand? Yes, ma'am. All right, thank you. you. may step down. Defense, call your next witness. Yes, Your Honor. Uh, at this time, defense would call Madison Moore. Uh, no. Does anyone need a break? I see you. All right, so we're going to take a break. Uh, I'm going to have you all come back. At 4.15, remember you've heard some, I'm sorry, just have her wait outside for one moment. You've heard some testimony in this case. You're not allowed to discuss it amongst yourselves or deliberate or do any investigation. Everything you need to know about this case will come from inside the courtroom. Does everyone understand? All right. I think that this case may end up resting today. So are you all okay with going past the 4.30 if we can rest today, which would mean uh, closing arguments would happen tomorrow at 9 a.m.? Is everyone okay with that? Yes. All right, everyone, please rise for the jurors. Everyone, please be seated. Uh, defense, call your next witness. Yes, Your Honor, defense will call Madison Moore. All right, can you raise your right hand? Do you solemnly swear, affirm the testimony you give will be the truth and nothing but the truth? So help you, God. Yes, ma'am. All right, you can lower your hand if you state your name for the record. So, my name is Madison Moore. M A D I S O N M O O R E. May I proceed, Your Honor? Yes. Thank you. Good afternoon, Madison. How are you? I'm good. How are you? So, uh, my name is Mario Moreno. Uh, I am co-counsel for Wardell Lemon. Uh, I'm going to ask you some questions. Okay. If uh, at any point in time I ask a question that you don't understand um, or you want me to rephrase, just let me know. If it's something that you don't know the answer to, please let us know that you just don't know. Okay. Uh, and also, uh, this is being recorded, so please make sure that all answers are uh, verbal. No head nods or, or anything like that. Um, it's the Reporter is unable to note head nods or mm hmms or okays or I'm sorry or uh uh's. Okay. All right, thank you. So, Matt, Madison, how old are you? I'm 15. 15 years old. Do you know Amanda Lewis? Uh, Mandy? Oh, uh, Mandy Lewis. Is that how you know her? Yes, that's how I know her. Okay. Uh, how do you know Mandy Lewis? Um, she's my mom's friend. Mom's friend. And, and who is your mom? Shauna Stevens. Shauna Stevens. Uh, do you know Wardell Lemon? Yes, sir. How do you know Wardell Lemon? Also my mom's friend. And do you know uh, Madison Keeney? Yes, sir. How do you know Madison Keeney? Um, I know her because my mom got together with Mandy and Wardell, and we became friends because we were hanging out at the same house. We'd hang out together. Uh, at what age were you, uh, what, at, yeah, at what age were you when you met Madison, if you can remember? I'd say probably around five or six, if I had to guess. And at what age were you when they moved away, Madison moved away with her family? Um, I don't know. You don't recall? I don't recall. Okay. But uh, is it safe to say that you were under the age of 10 when you were friends with Madison? Yes, sir. Do you remember a, a lot about your, your friendship with Madison? Most of it, yes. Most of it? Uh, 
When you were hanging out or playing with Madison, uh, where were y'all? We were mostly in her room. So it would be at Wardell's house? Yes. Did the two of you ever uh, play or hang out at your own house? Uh, we did once or twice, maybe. Um, Mandy was there. or um, But yeah. But for uh, a majority of the times when you were playing with Madison, it would be at Wardell and Mandy's house. Yes, sir. What, what sort of things would y'all do there? Um, we would play on her iPad or we would play with her giant Barbie house. Um, we'd watch TV in her room sometimes. Um, that's pretty much it. That's what we would do. Did the two of y'all ever play with Wardell? No, we would go in and watch him play, but we never played with him. When you were hanging out with or playing with Madison, um, was Wardell around very often? Uh, most, of the time. most of the time. Besides when we were in her room, he was playing games in the other room. Okay. So when the two of you were alone in her room, did he ever, you know, try to sneak in and, and be alone with the two of you? No. At any point in time, did did uh, you ever um, experience any issues with Rodell in, in terms of any inappropriateness or, or him being creepy in any way? No, sir. Um, and so would that apply to the way he was acting with? You and Madison, or just you? Both of us. Both of us. Or both of y'all. At any point in time, did you ever feel uncomfortable being around Wardell? No. Uh, were you and Madison, would you consider yourselves at the time close friends? Yes, sir. Did she ever indicate to you at any point in time... Um, that Wardell was being creepy or touching her inappropriately? No, she did not. How did you feel whenever uh, Madison moved away? I'm sorry? How did you feel when Madison moved away to uh, out of San Antonio? I was a little upset because I lost a friend, but I eventually got over it. I mean, I was young. I had friends of my own. Did the two of you stay friends? No. Were you made aware at some point of the allegations uh, from this case? Yes, I was. When you learned of those allegations, uh, about how old were you? Probably around the age of 12 or 13. How old are you now? 15. Oh, you didn't mention that. Thank you. Um, how did you feel whenever you heard uh, what the allegations were? Objection. Relevance, Your Honor. Not for rule. How, how did the allegations make you feel? I was shocked. More in disbelief. I couldn't imagine him ever doing anything. And why is that? He just wasn't the type of guy to. He was super friendly, super fun to be around. He never really touched us inappropriately. He would give us hugs, but he wouldn't it wouldn't be weird. I felt comfortable around him. So when I found out about it, I was more in disbelief. After Madison moved away, um, did you and your family still spend time with Wardell and Mandy? Yes, we did. Uh, were there any days or times where you were alone with Wardell? Um, maybe once or twice. Well, my mom and Mandy went out to go grab something, I would sit in a room with him and watch him play games. During those times, uh, did he ever do anything inappropriate with you? No, sir. Did he ever uh, make you feel uncomfortable? No. We'll pass the witness, Your Honor. State. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, uh, Madison, um, you said that you were alone with the defendant maybe once or twice, right? Yes. It was just you and... Uh, the defendant? Yes. Okay. Um, did he ever ask you to sit on his lap? No. Um, did he ever ask if he could massage your belly? No. Okay. Um, and 
you said you found out about these allegations about two or three years ago? Yes. Um, who told you about the allegations? My mom. Okay. Um, have you spoken with um, Madison um, since you learned about the allegations? No. Um, have you ever met her father? I don't think so, no. Okay. Um, so the only person you've heard about any of the facts surrounding this case is from your mom? Yes. Um, and your mom is close friends with uh, Mandy? Yes, she is. Um, now, the times that you would um, play with Madison over at the defendant's house, um, you said you played on, on the iPad? Yes, sir. What kind of games would y'all play? Uh, we would play games where we would make cakes or we would, like, it was like ice cream shop games where you would pretend to serve people ice cream. We would play, I think it was called Fruit Ninja at that time. Or just some fun, silly games like that. Um, did you ever play uh, Grand Theft Auto with Madison? No. Were you allowed to play those kind of games? I was, but I was never interested in it. Okay. Um, and you said you haven't talked to Madison in about six years, right? No. Um, did you ever see uh, Madison sitting on um, the on the defendant's lap anytime? No. no? Would it um, be a surprise to you that the defendant asked the uh, asked Madison to sit on his lap multiple times? Objection. If you're sick, that'd be overruled. You can answer the question. It would be a surprise to me. Why would it be a surprise? Because he never, he just wasn't that type of person. He kept to himself, sort of. Did your um, did your mom ever go out alone with um, the defendant and Mandy? I don't know. Pass the witness, Your Honor. Defense. One moment, Your Honor. No further questions, Your Honor. Um, All right. Is this witness excused or subject to recall? She's excused, Your Honor. Excuse me. Excuse me. All right. The rule has been invoked. What that means is you can't discuss your testimony with anyone. The only person you're allowed to speak to are attorneys for the state of the defense. Do you understand? Yes, ma'am. All right. Thank you. Thank you. You may step down. Defense rest this time. State. State closes. Defense. Close. All right, ladies and gentlemen, you've heard all the evidence you're going to hear in this case. Uh, what will happen is I'm going to have you come back tomorrow at 9 a.m. And at that time, I'll read what's called the charge of the court. And both parties will have a chance if they choose to give closing arguments to you. And then at that time, you will be allowed to select a four person and begin your deliberations. But for now. You're not a start, start deliberating in your head or talking to each other or talking to anyone about this case. Does everyone understand? If you see anything, you are to ignore it and not look at it. You are not to do any investigation. Everything that you need to know about this case comes from inside this courtroom. Does everyone understand? Yes. All right. So tomorrow, because it's 9 a.m., Thursday, we still have other jurors coming here. So to be assured a spot, you probably should get here about 830. So you have a 99% chance of getting a space. I do have a docket in the morning, but I'm going to take this case first and then I'll do the rest of my docket after you hear closing arguments. All right, everyone, please rise for the jurors. Oh, please be seated. Seated. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to have the proposed jury charge printed out for you all and give you all a chance to look over that and then let me know if there's any additions you want or any objections you have. Okay. Sounds good, Your Honor. State, are you prepared to proceed with your closing arguments? Yes, Your Honor. You may proceed. Thank you.
Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. You've seen all the, or heard all the testimony and seen all the evidence that will be presented in the case. So before we go into argument, I want to take some time with you to go over some points in the law that you just heard from the judge. So again, like the judge told you, uh, you'll go in the back room, the jury room to deliberate and hopefully ultimately reach a, a unanimous verdict. Um, you'll elect the one presiding juror, juror who's going to be the leader of you, who will eventually turn in the verdict form um, once you uh, reach the culmination of your deliberations. Uh, you'll have all the evidence that's been admitted into evidence with you to look over. One thing that we don't want you to expect to have is any police reports or any other documents that weren't entered into evidence. You won't be able to get those. You won't be able to look at those. You will have all other pieces of evidence that were presented and actually entered into evidence in this case. Now, uh, the elements of the charge indecency with a child by contact, state has the burden of proving to you that on or about January 1st of 2015 in Bear County, Texas, the defendant, Wardell Lemon, did intentionally or knowingly engage in sexual contact with Madison Keeney, who was younger than 17 years of age, by touching part of the genitals of Madison Keeney with the intent to arouse or gratify the sexual desire of any person. Now, a lot of these, Ms. Mitchell will go over with you, but I did want to point out a few of these that we've already proven to you. Now, I'm going to start with the on or about January 1st, January 1st of 2015 language. Now, we're, the state isn't required to prove to you that the act occurred on any specific day. The state only has to prove to you that either one, the incident occurred prior to the date of indictment, which would be January 23rd of 2020, or before the statute of limitations for this case ran. Now, in the state of Texas, there is no statute of limitations for the charge that Mr. Lemon is charged with. So we've already satisfied this element by proving to you that through testimony that this occurred sometime before January 23rd of 2020. And again, uh, we've also shown you testimony that, the, that Madison was uh, younger than 17 years of age because she went up there and testified to you that she's only 16 as of this time. So she was definitely un, yet younger than 17 when these incidences occurred. Um, and like I said, Ms. Mitchell will go over with you more in depth the, the rest of the elements that have come into question in this case. But we satisfied on or about January 1st of 2015 through testimony that this occurred in Bear County, Texas, at uh, Madison's mother's house, where this all occurred in San Antonio, um, and that she was younger than 17 years of age. And I would submit to you at this time that we've also proven the rest of the elements that the defendant did intentionally or knowingly insert his pants into Madison Keeney's under, or insert his hand into Madison Keeney's underwear uh, to touch part of her genitals with the intent to arouse or gratify the sexual desire of any person, including himself. The state will submit to you that we've proven all of those elements. And if you reach the conclusion that we've proven all of those elements beyond a reasonable doubt, then you must find the defendant guilty. Now, again, we went over this in Vordire with you a few days ago, but just to touch on it again, beyond a reasonable doubt, there's no definition for it in the state of Texas. It's not required that we prove each of those elements to you beyond all possible doubt, just beyond a reasonable doubt. So we ask you to use your common sense when you're in the back deliberating over the facts that all the witnesses have testified to you and just think whether or not what they're saying makes sense to you uh, in regards to the information that was presented for these elements. If you feel that an alternative theory to explain something is possible, that doesn't mean that it's reasonable. So just because something else may have happened or something else may explain what occurred, you have to think to yourself, is it reasonable to believe that that occurred? So when you go in the back, we want you to ask yourself three questions. Do I have a doubt about any of the elements in the case? Is it a reasonable doubt? And does that doubt that I have touch on any of the elements that we, the state was uh, had the burden to prove to you? And I know we talked about it, but you didn't get to see the visual of, of this on Tuesday. But take a look at this puzzle of this gun. Is it possible that all those missing puzzle, puzzle pieces are a purple puzzle piece as part of some abstract art piece? Sure, it's possible. But given the information that you have here, is it reasonable to, reasonable to believe that any of the pieces missing in this puzzle form anything other than a gun? And also when you're deliberating, we want you to deliberate and think about the credibility of all the witnesses that have been put on the stand. Look at their demeanor. How did they act on the stand when they were telling you about the events that happened? Look at their motive. 
who out of all the uh, out of all the witnesses would have any motive to lie or have any motive for anything to gain by testifying? We would submit to you that the only person that had anything to gain who spoke on that stand was uh, Amanda, Madison's mother, testifying on behalf of the defendant. She wanted to keep him out so that she can stay, so that she could eventually see her kids, have a place to live, and have the additional support. What did they say on the stand? Did what they say make sense to you? Does does it make sense more that Matt, that this defendant here asked Madison to sit on his lap so that he could reach into her underpants and touch her, or does what does anything that any of the defense witnesses make sense? That they didn't see anything happen to any of the other children, so it must have not have, have, have happened to Madison. Look at the consistency in their statements. Everybody that's gotten up there testified that Madison told them that she would sit, uh, that she would sit on Wardell's lap. He would insert his hand little by little each time and touch her. That has stayed consistent throughout all the witnesses and since the since the first report was made, since the outcry was made to Linda Keeney. Look at the points of view, what they're looking, uh, where they're testifying from. Are they testifying to help out the defendant? Are they help testifying to uh, help uh, to corroborate the uh, Madison's testimony? Do they have any skin in the game in what they're testifying to? Look at the time frame. Does the, t- the time in which the events that they're saying happened occurred make any sense? And the time elapsed from the beginning of the case till yesterday when all the witnesses testified. How have their statements been consistent and do they make do they make sense throughout that time frame? And lastly, just use your common sense. We all know what happened. Everything that Madison has said on there make, makes sense. Everything that she said is corroborated by the detective and by Linda. So take a look at all of that, and we're confident that you'll return a verdict of guilty. And you're at this time a state request to reserve the remainder of the time for argument. Thank you. Uh, defense, are you ready to proceed? Yes, Your Honor. Please support. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. At the beginning of evidence, in my opening statement, I told you this case was about three particular things. I told you it was about questionable motives, inconsistent allegations, a woefully short investigation. I'm going to get into those here shortly but first a couple things i want you to be able to refer to in the charge on page seven is the part that we discussed during jury selection several times of the defendant not testifying we went through that to make sure everybody during jury selection understood that you cannot put that against my client or del lemon you took an oath that you would not all of you answered that question that you would not from the judge and from the prosecution and from myself that is in the law that you have to refer to. Counsel referred to the honor about date. Okay. And that's that's true law. As you see, it's in here in the charge of the court. It's interesting, though, how that. This is something I'm going to harp on throughout my argument is. How lucky it is that that happens to be the circumstance in a case such as this. Well, nobody can seem to get the dates right. Nobody can seem to remember when things occurred. So now they're going to rely on the honor about any time prior to the presentment, after the presentment indictment, prior to the presentment indictment, before statute of limitations, which there is none. Okay. This is what they're telling you. Well, we know there's a lot of testimony as to not even seeing her in the last few years. So we know it didn't occur during that time. We know there was a few instances that they were seen prior to moving and we can't even get a clear date as to when they actually moved. So the honor about date, yeah, they're going to rely heavily on it. But that means that when it's given to you, you have to make that decision. And that's, that's unfair to you to have to make that decision, to have to come to a conclusion when nobody's done enough of an investigation or research to determine hey, there's more to give you to narrow down those dates. Just blanketly, we're going to rely on it, and here you go. The other thing is, I mentioned the puzzle pieces. And if you can see those puzzle pieces, they may add up to something. I'm going to submit to you 
there's plenty of pieces missing in this puzzle that we heard from the evidence this week, yesterday. So let's talk about a couple things. Inconsistent allegations. You heard about the statements to police, okay? You heard about things like it happened in her room at night. Subject arguing facts that are not in evidence. Don't write to submit the. Ladies, ladies and gentlemen of the jury, you've heard the evidence. You will remember the evidence as you've heard it. You may continue. Even the suggestion that it, her pants were pulled down. Then you hear that in the Child Advocacy Center video. No, it happened in the living room. In the morning. Waking up early. Going to the living room. Which one is it? Then you hear. Nobody talked to me about this. I just said it because of this conversation. Well, let's talk about that conversation first. The conversation with Linda's youngest daughter about dating that Madison gets involved in that suddenly just randomly turns to Wardell. And then after a couple more questions, we find out, no, this was actually more about anything that has ever happened to you. Because things were happening, as Madison's testified, things were happening in the area and they were worried about things that may have happened to me. So they started having conversations with us about this. And then specifically asked her, and Madison testified to this, which I'm sure is a surprise to Linda, that she, in fact, had asked her, did Wardell ever do anything to you that same day? That's what Madison testified to. So now you have this association. These types of activities, Wardell, being strict, now you've put her in a tough position to answer a question. Let's talk about her testimony on the stand, Madison's. She talked about, he touched the bottom of my private part. He doesn't move, he just lays there. She doesn't remember what she was wearing. She doesn't remember what elementary school she went to during this time. Now, some of you are like, well, what does that matter? She don't have to prove that. These little details, ladies and gentlemen, are important to determine age. They're important to determine her reliability of her memory. These things are something that are ingrained in your. She knew that she went to two different elementary schools, one here, one in Houston. Can't remember who they are, what they are, what they're named. So basically, the convenience of everybody's testimony is they only happen to remember the things to make my client, Mr. Wardell Lemon, look bad and as if they commit, he committed this crime. Well, that works out well for them. You heard testimony, yes, that she sat on his lap. You heard testimony from Amanda Lewis who says, yes, that was something that happened regularly. Actually, it happened so often. There's times I had to tell her, leave him alone. Let him do what he needs to do. Well, ladies and gentlemen, Somebody who spends time with somebody they consider to be a father figure. Somebody who spends time that um, they consider to be a father figure and hang out with. Like the defense exhibits number seven. I want a Spurs jersey just like his. I'm going to hang out, have fun with him. That's something that a young child might do, boy or girl. Play video games, sit on their lap. So they may make some note about, well, the other Madison said she never saw that. Well, that would be weird. If all She's playing with her friend. He wants her to play with her friend. They're having a good time. She's not going to go sit on Buddy's lap at that point. And... I'm going to submit to you if at some point he went over to her room and said, hey, come sit on my lap so we can play video games. That might be considered questionable. But in the circumstances where we're at home, when they're at home, hanging out, playing video games, drawing together, that's an innocent act. Let's talk about the inconsistent character attacks, okay? First, we have, they were left with random people. When we hear from Sean Stevens, I'm not random. I've known Amanda and Wardell for 10 years. I have a daughter the same age. They play together. They've hung out with them. 
So the insinuation that she was staying with random people at home, it's just something, once again, to try to assassinate his character and hers. Was concerned about the things that were going on at, the, at their house. Do you ever, ever hear anything about CPS being called? Do you ever hear about any investigation from CPS? No, I consulted with an attorney and he told me I couldn't do anything unless something illegal happened. And here we are. Justin testified that never saw, they never saw her once they moved. Or maybe, I don't think they saw her. And then Linda came in and said, no, they saw her at least once because I brought her. Justin didn't even know what's going on in regards to the custody agreement. He's just filing paperwork, letting Mattis, uh, Linda handle that stuff. He has no idea what the situation is. Let's talk about questionable motives. I hope you noticed, and some of you may believe, that the anger that Justin showed on the stand was just about the act that we're here for. It's not about that. He was clear. He does not like Wardell and he doesn't like them from the beginning. And he's made that clear. He has, I uh, hear testimony about him calling him a pimp in a text message. He was so quick to try to call him a drug dealer. He had to be admonished to only answer the questions. What else would he have said about Wardell if we wouldn't have admonished him? What else did he want to say about Wardell that there's no basis for? Can't keep bringing this enough to your attention. Can't change anything going on with custody or anything else unless something illegal happens. And like I said, once again, here we are. So he gets mad that their relationship has ended. Relationship, new relationship starts with Wardell. Okay, fine. He kicks, he kicks uh, Amanda out. But he also kicks Madison out. You heard Amanda tell you. So she's got him living with them. And then at that point, that's when they start living with Wardell. He has his own self to blame for the actions that have led us here. He, his anger has affected so many things related to the life of Madison. He wanted Amanda in jail. She testified to that. He wanted her in jail for lack of child support. I think the next thing, best thing is to try to put Wardell in jail. And now have you have the prosecution call in question her fitness as a mother. Why don't you believe your daughter? He's still going after her. He's still attacking her. Let's talk about greed. Money. July 2019. Files suit for modification enforcement. Just so happens in September is when it gets served upon Amanda. And then shortly thereafter, outcry happens. Ladies and gentlemen, does it make sense to you that these things would just happen so close in time just by happenstance? The prosecution wants to have you. What, what makes sense? Does that make sense? It just so happened that close in time to each other. And in fact, he's doing these things without his wife, Linda, knowing what's going on. She testified. I had no idea. I know she wasn't paying. She wanted to make that clear to y'all. I know she wasn't paying, but I didn't know he filed anything. So. He's doing all these things without her knowing, without her discussing it. And let's talk about that. Why, when he filed this, he's already married, has a stepchild that he's now supporting, has just moved into a house. He doesn't need that child support. And whether it's in, he's entitled to or not, at that point, he's just supplementing his income. He's not concerned about taking care of his daughter. He just wants more money. More money because he's got a new wife, because he's got an additional child to take care of. He even told you by his own testimony. I didn't file for it when I was a single dad. But wouldn't that make sense? Single dad, struggling to make take care of things for your daughter who's living with you. I want additional because I have her more of the time than you do. Not when you get married. Not when you have another kid. Not when you have a second income. 
Do we even know? Is she getting her own child support for her daughter, who she brings as part of her own custody agreement here? Those are questions you can think about. What's going on with this family? What are they more concerned about? Let's talk about jealousy. Some of you are like, what, what jealousy? Looking at these pictures, ladies and gentlemen, this was a young lady who was close with Wardell. She had a close relationship with him when she was young. And I submit to you, she didn't have that with the father. Do we have any evidence, any discussions about how they got along? Do we have any evidence, any photographs showing what they did together? Do we have any discussions about that? Their relationship was never going to be the same as what she had wore down. They had to hide bringing Madison to see her mom from Justin. Why is that? He said, well, I never, she never came. And Linda says, no, I came, she brought her at least once. So that means he didn't know about that. Amanda told you, yeah, there was time she told me, yeah, we can't. And that his, her own, back up real quick, that Linda's mom even would bring. All these people are still trying to have, have her have a relationship. But it appears that Justin's anger his greed and his jealousy have affected how Madison views Wardell. Let's talk about the lack of investigation. I'm sorry, what investigation? <clears throat> what do we have? An officer go out to the house, take a statement. We had a detective that followed up. They had a uh, child safe interview after that. And then they sent it over here to a detective who just copy and pasted other people's reports, made a few phone calls, and submitted it to the DA's office. That's it. Some other things you'd want to have in an investigation. How about you go out to the location that supposedly occurred? Where is this house? We had never even got an address to this house. All they want to say is it happened, and they keep harping, we've proven Bear County. All we keep hearing is San Antonio area. We know they live in shirts now, and that's not it necessarily in Barrett County, ladies and gentlemen. I haven't even specifically been told where this house is, what this house looks like. We heard the bedrooms. Officer could have gone out there. Hey, look, this is where everything happened. Let me document this. The state may say, well, defense could bring that to you as well. It's not our burden to bring you evidence in order to corroborate her statement and their statements. That's their burden. School records talked about trauma or that trauma may be experienced by complaining witnesses in these kind of cases. When we look into what, how she's been doing, she testified. I'm a good student, honor student, star track athlete. Don't get in trouble. No more everyday things. She's pretty well adjusted. Talk to other children. Anybody else feel uncomfortable? Anybody else have any had any issues? Nope, none of that. The detective from SAPD didn't even know about the civil filings that were made. She was shocked when she heard about it. What? What? I, don't, I didn't know anything about that. So, ladies and gentlemen, here's the, the, the bigger problem, is that the state puts on a witness that doesn't even know about that. That means that person didn't bring that information to the DA's office when they considered this case. And now, as I told you from the beginning, Sometimes these cases are about passing the buck along, rubber stamping it, and having somebody ultimately make a decision. Uh, I think it is. I'm not going to check. I'm not going to do any scrutiny of it. And then they put it at your doorstep to make that decision. <clears throat> well, ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to tell you that now that it is your decision, you get to scrutinize it. You get to look at it. And if you believe that there's doubt, and there is, then you have to find word of them not guilty. Because they didn't do their job. Because they didn't follow up. You heard from the detective that we believe every six to nine year old regarding inconsistencies. So then why investigate cases? If you're just going to believe them. Just submit it. Have them come in. That's it. And by the way, she was 12 when she outcried. 
So we're not talking about a 69 year old, somebody who's more mature, somebody who's apparently been put pressure on. And how do we know that, that she's been put pressure on her? Because they, during this supposed conversation about the type of man that they want her to be with, and that supposedly she said, oh, not like my mommy's boyfriend. Let's talk about who that man is. Somebody who's had his own successful business, somebody who has lived at the same residence, somebody who's been with the same woman for the last 10 years, somebody who has other individuals who trust their children with him, somebody who hangs out with a child when she comes in, not his own, but treats her as his own, hanging out, enjoying time with him. It's an important thing to know. To the point where she made a card from him. Buddy, this is for you. Dad, I love you so much. The heart, the house. Two minutes. Thank you, Your Honor. She did care for him. And she tried to downplay it in her testimony. She really tried hard. But why? From the pressure that she's getting from her dad. Let's think about who you did hear from. You didn't hear from anyone who did the investigation in Houston. How convenient is that, ladies and gentlemen, that any of the individuals who made contact with him, who we could question and cross-examine about their demeanor, the questions that they were asked, how they asked them, are not here. So with all that being said, this is the stuff the, state, the state's going to bring to you, is just have family members testify and that's enough. Without anybody who did an investigation have to answer for their investigation, what they didn't follow up on, what questions they did ask the family, and then you're supposed to find somebody guilty based upon that offense. I submit to you, ladies and gentlemen, this is not the kind of case that you should be forced to make a decision on and find somebody guilty. Send a message to the DA's office that they need to do more, that their investigators need to do more, that the police department needs to do more. Consider a couple other things, ladies and gentlemen. I want you to take note of Defense Exhibit Number Eight and State's Exhibit Number One, which is the photograph with her with the American Girl doll. I want you to remember this image and that image, something she was holding on that she loved. There was a relationship between the two of them. There is doubt in this case. And because of that, we're asking you to find Wardell Lemon not guilty of the offense. I'm asking you to sign the verdict form on top that says not guilty. And I've highlighted it there for you to see. Thank you for your time, ladies and gentlemen. State, you have 13 minutes. Okay, thank you, Glenn. All right. Let us not today. Um, <clears throat> 13 minutes to get through a lot of stuff. Okay, so I want to start with what's undisputed. Okay. Um, the basic timeline of Madison, of her life. We know she was born in 2007. We know that her mom and dad separated somewhere around 2010. We know that when they separated, the mom immediately went to go live with the defendant. We know that in 2012, 2013, there was an agreed order to give dad full custody. There was an agreement to alternating weekends. And there was an agreement for the mom to pay child support. We know that from 2013 until 2016, Madison would spend every other weekend with her mom and the defendant in San Antonio. Um, we know that she was approximately ages six to nine. We have pictures showing she was very young. We know that mom worked at least some of the weekends when she had Madison. Initially, she started off saying, I never, you know, I never would. And then she said, oh, yeah, well, I would take her to work. Oh, and I, I would let Shauna watch her, but never the defendant. <clears throat> um, 
We know that the defendant is the primary income in the household. He has the successful t-shirt business. I mean, Frollo's is a pretty successful restaurant. So a 10-year uh, contract with them, I mean, that that's a small portion of what his business is. But we don't know what his salary is, but we know that he's the prime earner. Uh, the mom didn't even hesitate to say, oh, yeah, it's him. We know that the mom moved into his residence. And we know that Madison did view the defendant as a father figure. That's not something the state is hiding from. It's natural. He was there since she was three years old. Of course she did. You know, they played video games. They watched sports. Learned from the defense that they did artwork together. We know that. We know that Madison, her father, stepmom, and step siblings moved to Cyprus near Houston around 2016. You know that the mom was invited to go out there. Uh, mom even testified, well, they wanted me to come out there. Like, that's so hard to do to go see your child. She never did it. We know that either the stepmom or the or grandma would occasionally bring Madison to see her. Stepmom, remember, had another child. His father lived in San Antonio, so she would bring them both. She testified to that. We know that the mom did not keep up with her child support. And unfortunately, we know that Madison's mom chose to just blindly support the defendant. Now, let's talk a little bit about some of our witnesses. Linda Keeney, the stepmom. Um, she, she testified she had no idea about this child support thing. Um, what... I don't see any motive for her to like go hard on the mom. She's the new stepmom. She's living her life. She has a very close relationship with Madison. Um, and Madison opened up to her. And Linda <laughs> said Madison, before she did, begged her, begged her, just please don't tell dad. Just please don't tell dad. And she did that because she didn't want this. She didn't want this. Um, Linda told you that just like Madison testified back in 2019, when she told Linda, she said the same thing that he would run her stomach and then slowly go down and eventually touched her genital area. Same thing she said. Um, Sergeant O'Brien, she came up here. She was awesome. She's smart. She knows her job. She knows these cases. She told you that one of the main things she does is she looks for consistency. Now, I'm sorry we weren't able to bring you the witnesses from Houston. The witnesses don't come. We can't show you. But we were able to show you Sergeant O'Brien. Sergeant O'Brien. She specialized in this. She looked over the police reports of Houston. She looked over Madison's story to the forensic interviewer in Houston. She looked over Madison's account to the sexual assault nurse in Houston. She found consistency. Consistency in the acts. She testified what Madison said is consistent with trauma, consistent with a child around that age. Um, as far as her steps, you know, a lot of it had been done in Houston, but she, she did what she could. She tried to reach out to the mom. How is she supposed to go to the house if the mom won't even call her back? And we know that the mom received the voicemail. She said she did. She's like, yeah, I got the voicemail, but Wardell had already talked to her. Okay. So your boyfriend is being accused of sexually touching your daughter 
who you supposedly miss, and you don't even want to talk to police about it? Come on. Um, Sergeant O'Brien told you that specifically in this case, she saw evidence of grooming. Grooming is not a concept that many people know, especially a 12-year-old girl. And remember, Madison was only 12 years old when she got pregnant. How is a 12-year-old girl going to think of a story that fits the textbook grooming so perfectly? And remember, Sergeant O'Brien said grooming is you start touching and you they get more comfortable and then you do more and do more. She used the example of tickling. Okay. Now we know that the defendant introduced Madison to, to fun things. Spurs basketball, video games, Grand Theft Auto, artwork, roughhousing, face swap. He, ma he made sure that they had common interests. And then, when given the opportunity, he said, hey, come sit on my lap. Come sit on my lap. Seemed innocent enough. Now, remember, though, that that's not consistent with his behavior. Having a young girl sit on his lap is not consistent with his behavior. Madison Moore said she was surprised when we said that he did that. And the mom was like, oh, it's no big deal. Yeah, he did it. So corroboration right there. She didn't even know she was corroborating a significant fact in this case. It started on the lap, playing, rubbing stomach. Madison said even at, you know, age seven, eight, she knew it was wrong. But I mean, come on, he's the one in power here. What's a six or seven year old gonna say about that? He started slowly lowering his hand and he would just hold it there. And he was very careful about it. She said if she ever pushed his hand away, he would stop. If she ever said, please stop, he would stop. But he would just go and do it again. He was training her. Eventually, he got all the way down. Not even just on top of her under there. He went all the way down and touched her inner genital area. And again, he was careful. He wasn't even moving his hand. He just kept it there. And I submit to you, if they had not moved to Houston, it would have gone better. This is typical sex offender behavior just like Sergeant O'Brien said. Ruben talked about motive. Uh, Madison had absolutely nothing to do with this. She told you she was scared to tell her mom while it was going on. She loved her mom. Her mom. She loved him. And we talked about why people delay their out outcry. Well, <laughs> By the time 2019 had come along, um, she undoubtedly had heard that her mom had not been paying child support. If you look at that paperwork, it was $20,000 or more that the mom just hadn't paid. At that point, she knew that fear she had of losing her mom didn't matter anymore. Mom hasn't come to see her for years. So she told Linda, she trusted Linda. She was carrying this. Two minutes. <clears throat> the only witness you heard from with a motive to lie was the mom. Madison, um, a few things I want to say. Um, we're talking age six to nine when this happened. She's 16 years old now. Ten years is a long time for an adult to carry something like this. When you're talking about a first, second grader, to a junior in high school, those are her, the most formative years of her life. 
And think about how fickle teenagers are and fickle children are. And her story has stayed the same. She has not wavered in her story. <clears throat> and one thing, it, the defense wants you to believe this is all her father. Her father is doing all of this. That's not a reasonable doubt. This girl is smart. She's in honors classes. She's going into AP classes. You really think she's going to let her father dictate everything? She's going to get up here and lie and risk ruining her future? In order to buy what the defendant is saying, you have to believe that everything she said was coached, that she does not have autonomy over herself. This is a smart, capable girl. And she was truthful for you. And brave. Final thoughts. The defendant had access to her. Mom disputed that. He had access. He had her trust. He had the opportunity. And he had the support from her own mom. And he knew it. He had the control. We talked about the puzzle. Yeah, there's some pieces missing, but you can still clearly see that guy, and you can still clearly see what he did to her. And we ask that you find him. All right, ladies and gentlemen, you have all the evidence that you're going to receive in this case. Uh, if I can have Estrada and Pettis remain behind, please. And Deputy Laura will take you all to the back. All right, everyone, please rise. All right, thank you. So, everyone, I'm informed that we have a verdict. There will not be any outbursts in this courtroom. There will not be any hoorays or from either side. If that happens, you will be escorted out of this courtroom, which means you will not be here to testify because you will be escorted out of the courtroom when you will not be brought back into this courtroom. Does everybody understand? I see defense and state. Can you mute us for a second? All right. All right, ladies and gentlemen, it's the court's understanding that you've reached a verdict. Is that correct? All right. And is it unanimous? All right. If you will hand that to the deputy, please. Thank you, Deputy Laura. All right. If the defendant will rise. The verdict form reads, we, the jury, find the defendant, Wardell Lemon, guilty of the offense of indecency with a child by sexual contact as charged in the indictment. You may be seated. Would anyone wish to have the jury polled? We would, Your Honor. All right, ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to ask each of you if this is your verdict. If this is your verdict, I want you to say yes. Does everyone understand? All right. We'll start on the front row, and we'll start with you, sir, and make our way down. Is this your verdict? Yes, ma'am. Is this your verdict? 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 And we'll start on the back row with this way. Is this your verdict? Yes. Is this your verdict? Is this your verdict? Yes. Is this your verdict? Is this your verdict? Is this your verdict? All right. So, ladies and gentlemen, what will happen next? It will be the punishment phase. 
But as you can see, the courtroom is crowded. So I'm going to give you your lunch break now. And the courtroom is crowded is because this is my docket. So I'm going to give you a slightly long lunch break. The reason being is because we're going to continue to work on the other cases that are on the docket. And I still need to make sure that the deputies and the court reporter and all of the rest of the staff have a break. So we are going to come back at 1.30. All right, again, do not view anything, do not do any investigation. Everything that you need to know will come from inside the courtroom. Does everyone understand? Yes. All right, everyone, please rise for the jurors. Thank you. All right, everyone, please be seated. All right, defense. If you need to confer with your client, uh, the deputy will allow you to confer with your client. All right, let's bring them. All right, for the jury. And ladies and gentlemen, I'm sorry it took a little bit longer than anticipated, but as you could tell, the courtroom was crowded with uh, my docket, and I wanted to make sure that the staff did have a chance to regroup and have their lunch and, and relax. So this is the punishment phase of this trial. State. Good afternoon again, ladies and gentlemen. Um, as the judge explained to you, we are now in the punishment phase of the trial. This is where you are all given the important duty of deciding how to speed at justice is serving. You've already returned a verdict of guilty. The state has shown you beyond a reasonable doubt that the defendant was guilty of the, of the charge of indecency uh, with a child by contact. Now, at this stage, you'll be able to get a little bit more information. Um, we'll, you'll hear testimony, again, from the complaining witness, Madison Keeney, about how the acts committed by the defendant have changed her life, have affected her relationships, and how this is still continuing to damage parts of her life. Um, You'll hear from that. You'll also hear about the uh, defendant's prior criminal history. Um, and you'll get to take that again into the back uh, in the jury room with you to deliberate uh, what punishment uh, is deserved in this case. And once you hear from all the testimony in this phase of the trial, we'll ask you to return a sentence of uh, 20 years. Thank you. All right. Defense? Yes, Your Honor. Yes. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. The uh, defense uh, understands your verdict and respects it. Um, what you're going to hear from punishment from us is you're going to hear from some family members and friends that you didn't hear from in the, in the guilt and innocent phase uh, regarding the person that Wardell is. You're going to hear about the circumstances regarding the injury to a child case. What you're going to hear is that there was an accident where a window was broken and one of his children happened to be near that window and suffered an injury. You're going to hear that since that time, it happened 20 years ago, he has supported his son and been a part of his life and helped him become what he says, become an upstanding citizen in the community. Um, we're going to ask that you consider the lower range of the punishment range. We're going to ask that you consider sentencing word out to two years in the issue of the Texas Department of Criminal Justice. State? To enter state's exhibit P1. No objection, Aaron. All right. And the state was about the All right. State's exhibit P1 is admitted without objection. And, Your Honor, um, the state was to publish. Grant it. At, the, at this time, the state calls Ms. Madison Keeney. All right. All right. If you have a seat, you're still under oath. Uh, be sure to remember to keep your voice up so that the ladies and gentlemen can hear and also so that the court reporter can hear. State? Good afternoon, Madison. Um, I wanted to start out by asking you uh, a few questions. Now, you, you're aware that um, uh, Wardell has been found guilty of, of the child, right? Yes. And um, although the... Um, the events have ended. Are you still affected by what we're held to? Yes. I'm the trauma that he's caused is never gonna go away. 
it's always going to be there and it's always going to affect me. Um, specifically, how has this um, affected your, your relationship uh, with your mother? My mom simply didn't choose me. She chose her boyfriend over her own daughter, who she birthed out of her. Didn't choose to believe me. And it hurts that somebody who's supposed to raise you. Somebody who's supposed to love you and teach you how to love other people wasn't there. And it still affects me to this day. I mean, that's why I didn't want to say anything for the longest time because I didn't want to lose the relationship I had with her. But after seeing what side she chose, it made me realize she doesn't care about me. That's just simply the truth. Um, has she attempted to contact you at all since you spoke out about these, these actions? She has never tried to say happy birthday or I miss you or I love you. And the only thing she's ever tried, I guess you could say by reaching out, is sending a message of me with her saying I love you. And after that, she's never said anything. And that was maybe two, three years ago. And she's on blocked on iMessage. She could message me at any time. Um. How has this affected other relationships you have with with your your dad and um, Linda? It put trust issues towards men in my life in general. I don't trust them because of what happened, but that's just the trauma that he caused on me, and I don't trust men. I just simply don't. Um, has this affected the way that you see men? men or even boys your age in general yes how has it done that i don't desire that type of relationship or affection from a man because of what happened because it scares me and i don't know what a boy capable of my age will do to me because i have that fear of what he is um do you do these um do the thoughts about what were dealt with to you still come up and as much as I not try not to think about it or push it further back to where I don't remember things, it will always come up and it will always be there. Um, now, uh, before all of this happened, uh, how did you see, or what was your relationship like with Wardell before he did this to you? I'm not going to sit here and say for when I was little, I didn't see him as a father figure. I did. But that's because he made sure I did see him as that. He made sure I had trust with him so that I allowed him to do what he did. And he made sure we had common interests in what we did so that he could do what he did. He knew what he was doing, and he did it in a smart way. And how, how does it make you feel now at this stage in your life, knowing that that trust was taken advantage of? It hurts because as a child who's somebody who you looked up to and trusted, it hurts. And do you have any um, plans to attend any type of therapy or counseling? Yes. And um, when when are you going to be doing that? As soon as this is over, I we already have an appointment. State passes the witness, Your Honor. Yes. Good afternoon, Madison. Um, real quick, uh, you mentioned a little bit ago about the fact that your mom is unblocked on uh, Instagram or some social media. I said she's unblocked on iMessage, yes. Okay. Um, why did you mention that? Because she claims that she tried to reach out to me multiple times and that she's blocked on everything. She's only blocked on Instagram. So let me ask you this. Where did you hear that? She said it. When? When she was testifying. Were you in here when she was testifying? No. 
So then who did you hear from? We watched. You watched what? Um, and didn't, didn't she say, Shauna say on her testify that she was watching it too? Did you watch Shauna's testimony? No, I just watched my mother's. So you watched your mother's testimony? When it was done, yeah. On what? On YouTube. I'm sorry? On YouTube. Your Honor, can we approach? Yes, just a second. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to have you step outside of the courtroom. And so I will call you back in. From the testimony of the complaining witness regarding watching testimony of witnesses within the courtroom, it cannot be clear as to how much she watched in her own her own discrepancies of who she watched, when she watched, and how she watched, bringing into question how that's affected their own testimony. All right. And so, yes. Oh, Your Honor, the state is going to say, first off, that uh, she just said on the stand that she watched it after it was done, which after the trial was over, the rule is no longer in effect. Defense has their punishment witnesses in the courtroom right now. If the rule is still in effect, then they can't call any of their punishment witnesses. And yesterday, the defense called two witnesses who no, voted. No, let's, let's just, we're just addressing the issue. Have a seat, please. We're just addressing what has been brought to the court's attention, which is the defense is saying that this witness watched another witness's testimony after she testified, after this witness, the complainant testified, that her testimony now, she watched another witness. Is that correct? That appears to be the, the instance you're on. All right. So I want the record to be clear. So my understanding is that the witness who's currently on the witness stand watched her mother's testimony after Madison had already testified. Is that correct? That would be the order, Your Honor, because she testified first and Madison at that point, I'm sorry, um, Miss Healy would have then testified after her in, in order. So she, she would have watched it after her testimony. So the defense is asking for a mistrial based upon the fact that this witness saw her mother's testimony after this witness had already testified. Is that correct? That's correct. Yeah. So there is, the defense is not arguing that this witness violated the, the rule that was invoked before her testimony. Is that correct? That's correct, John. All right. All right. State. Any other argument? Um, I would just echo the concerns of the court that this witness had already given their testimony at the time when the uh, any possible testimony could been, have been watched from another witness. And uh, the witness clearly said that the viewing of the testimony came after the uh, guilt innocence phase of trial. All right, defense, the motion for the mistrial is, is going to be denied, but with regards to her testimony, is it sufficient for the defense that the jury be given an instruction that they are to disregard any testimony from this witness uh, related to her mother's attempt to contact her? Yes, Your Honor. All right. Is there anything else from either side? No, Your Honor. We can bring them in. All right, everyone, please be seated. Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, the rule has been invoked in this courtroom. I know you all have heard me tell jurors each time that, I'm sorry, tell witnesses each time that they step from the witness stand that the rule has been invoked. What that means is you can only discuss your testimony or have discussions with attorneys for the state or the defense. In this case, it appears that this witness um, viewed testimony that was not allowed for her to view. So with that being said, this is what I'm going to tell you you are to disregard. Any statements made by this witness who's on the witness stand related to whether her mother had contact with her or not, or how her mother had contact with her, you are to wholly disregard. 
So it is though that question was never asked. It is as though that statement was never said. Does everyone understand? So you're not to consider it whatsoever if you are to able to reach uh, punishment in this case. Does everyone understand? All right. Any questions about the court's instruction? All right. Thank you. Defense. Yes, sir. Uh, Madison, uh, you were asked a question about uh, counseling, which you were going to start, I guess, after this is done. Yes. Okay. And you have not had any counseling in the last uh, two or three years? No. Um, have they told you that one of the consequences of this uh, conviction is that Wardell will be a have to register as a sex offender for life? Yes. Okay. Nothing further, Your Honor. All right. Any other further questions? Nothing from a state, Your Honor. All right. Thank you. You may step down. All right. State, call your next witness. State has no further witnesses. Witnesses, the state was. All right. Defense, do you have any witnesses? Your Honor, the defense will call Nolan Anderson. And Your Honor, preliminarily, the state would object to uh, any of the defense's witnesses who were present during. Uh, Madison Keeley's testimony um, and would ask that she be excluded from testifying in this case. All right. Was this person present? This person was present, Your Honor. The rule had not officially been invoked by the court regarding this. In addition, Your Honor, anything that they are going to testify to is only related to Mr. Anderson, not for her testimony. All right. That will be overruled. All right. You have a seat here, sir. Thank you. Can you raise your right hand? Do you solemnly swear or affirm the testimony you give will be the truth and nothing but the truth will help you, God? Yes, ma'am. All right, you can lower your hand and have a seat. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Okay. No problem. Just one second. I'm sorry. Just one second. No problem. <laughs> All right. Can you state your name for the record, please? Yes, ma'am. Uh, Major retired Nolan Hamilton Anderson III. All right. Defense. Thank you, Your Honor. Mr. Anderson, how do you know Wardell Lemon? I know Wardell Lemon practically my whole life since 1985, right before Transformers, the movie came out. Okay. Uh, how did y'all meet? I, I was riding my bike. And uh, I saw Wardell and his brother, and I can't remember her name, but they're outside playing. And they also had some Transformers that I didn't have. So I was like, whoa, hey, that's pretty cool. I didn't know anybody because we had just moved from Germany at the time. My father was also retired military in the Air Force. So we had just moved in the neighborhood. So it was a good opportunity for me to meet a friend. Okay. And so you've been friends ever since then? Yes, sir. Um, did y'all go to school together? Yes, sir. Um, so y'all share the same likes, dislikes, things like that? Absolutely. What kind of things did you do growing up? Uh, we played basketball, even though I was better than him. <laughs> um, sports football, we were on the uh, neighborhood swimming team, <laughs> played video games, of course, still do to this day. And one of the most things, we still collect Transformers. Um, you've known him as he's become an adult? Yes, sir. And uh, you've known him in his relationship with Amanda Lewis? Yes, sir. Um, talk to me about how he has been as a, as a, in his relationship and how he's been with children that you've seen. Woodell has always been a, uh, a loving father as myself, because I'm a father myself. And uh, he just re-engaged himself back with his children, his two sons, uh, Caleb and Michael. Michael. And so uh, as for me being a father, I mean, he's always treated his uh, his children as a, as there was his own. Um, at times, like when I had barbecues at my house, both Mordell and Mandy would come to my house to watch uh, USC fights. And it also would bring Madison. Um, has, has Mordell always been uh, a provider? Yes, sir. Um, who do you see? Who has he supported uh, during the last... 20, 30 years that you've done it. The whole, his whole household, sir. Which includes? Which includes, which includes Madison when she would come visit. It also include Mandy Lewis, his girlfriend, and also his sons. 
and also they had a plethora of uh, animals. They, they, uh, he was a, like a dog breeder. It was animal love. Oh yeah, he barked all the time. Um, <laughs> how has he been with you as far as for as a friend in the last twenty years? He's one of my best friends. I have three categories of best friends: my friends I knew in middle school and high school, my friends I knew when I played football in college, and my friends that I I've known right now in the military that I ret- just recently retired. In 2021. How would this affect Wardell's family if he sends uh, anywhere near 20 years? It would crush him. One, he's a father. Two, he's a man. Three, he's a black man just like me. And I, as a father, have been going through similar things with my of my best friends, as far as with seeing his seeing my son. So I understand the ramifications of what's going on. You mentioned he's a, a black man. What does that? How does that tell the jury what what significance that has? Well, look at American history. What's goes? What's been going on? Um, there's been significant strides in our country, but there are some work that still needs to be done. Things that, needs to happen, things that needs to happen. But it's true. I'll pass away this time. State? Um, you know, we're out pretty well. Yes, sir. And he's a pretty good guy. Absolutely. Um, and uh, you know what he does for a living? Yes. Uh, his his uh, cousin... And they they designed T-shirts. He also, as a matter of fact, he also designs uh, websites as well. Okay. He's very he's uh he's very engaged in his work he, that he does. I also tried to commission him to design a, an emblem for one of my units while I was in the army, which was absolutely amazing, as a matter of fact. But unfortunately, he wasn't selected for selection for the product of the uh, to be produced for T-shirts. But yeah, it was an amazing product. Do you know uh, what kind of volume his shirt business does? Sorry? You know, the like, um, how much in sales his shirt business does? I don't have any type of information on that regarding that. Um, did Wardell ever talk to you about the allegations against him? Yes, he mentioned it, yes. What did he say? Object to hearsay, Your Honor. That'll be overruled. He mentioned the allegations that happened. And as me, when I, mean, I heard it, I said, I didn't believe it. So he told you he didn't do it? Yes. yes, sir. What did he tell you he was accused of? Allegedly, uh, some type of sexual misconduct. Did he tell you exactly who the, the um, person was it was against? Negative. On, the, on those details, no. Did he tell you it was against the child? That eventually came up, yes, sir. Did he tell you exactly what he was accused of doing to a child? No, sir. Um, did Wardell ever drink? Yes, sir. Did he ever smoke marijuana? Not that Section I know of relevance. Got to be overruled. Not that I know of. Okay. Did you ever go to Wardell's house? Yes, sir. Did you ever uh, see um, Wardell and uh, Amanda's daughter, Madison? Yes. Um, what did you observe when they were together? She was happy. There, uh, we would go play. We go to the bowling alley and bowl. Um, typically, that's the type of activities that we do. We just meet at the bowling alley. We don't bowl. No further questions. Doesn't All right. Thank you. You may step down. Well, thank you, ma'am. Defense, call your next witness. Taylor uh, Gallegos. Uh, I just take a seat here, please. Can you raise your right hand for me, please? Do you solemnly swear or affirm the testimony you give will be the truth and nothing but the truth will help you God? I do, Your Honor. All right, you can lower your hand if you'll state your name for the record. Caleb Marshall. All right, defense. Mr. Marshall, uh, did you one time also go by the name of Gallegos? Uh, yes, sir, I did. 
And how when did that name change? Uh, when I was eight. And why did it change? Because I was adopted. Okay. How do you know uh, Ward L. Lemon? Uh, he's my father. Okay. Um, you were adopted from a family outside of your mother and um, Ward L. It's the same family, but um, it was my great aunt who adopted me. You know the circumstances that led to your adoption? Um, they couldn't afford to take care of me at the time. Um, are you aware of an incident that you were involved in as a young child that led to your dad being placed on probation? Yes, sir, I am. Did your dad ever talk to you about that? Uh, no, sir. Okay. Um, have you had any long-term issues from that particular incident? No, sir, I haven't. Were you aware it was an accident that happened? Yes, sir. Um, you said you were adopted at eight? Yes, sir. Okay. And so what was your relationship like with Wardell at that point? Um, my uh, adopted family made it a little complicated to talk to him at the time. Um, but whenever I got a little bit older, I sort of reached out to him and started talking to him on my own. What did you learn about your father when you started having this relationship with him? There were a lot of like when it comes to like uh, creativity and like stuff like that. What has your relationship been like since you were eight years old? Um, I talk to him like routinely. I go to him for advice, help with creating something like graphic design, stuff like that. How has he been with you as you've become a, a young man, an adult? Uh, he's been a key factor in who I am today. And explain to the jury how so. Um, it's just if I ever have any questions about anything that anyone that would be my age trying to find their way in life would, uh, he's the first person I turn to, whether it be how do I talk to this girl or how do I figure this out or how do I get this promotion at work? Like he's this person that I talk to about everything. You're aware um, that your father been convicted of, of a crime involving a child. Yes, sir, I am. Um, and you're aware that the possible punishment range is two to 20 years. Yes, sir. I'll tell the jury how it would affect your family if Wardell sent away for a long period of time. Uh, I lose another father, and then I don't have anyone to ask any questions about anything that I need help with trying to navigate through this difficult game that is life. I'll pass it to State. Um, Caleb, when you said you were adopted by your great aunt um, when you were eight years old. Yes, sir. And how long did you live with your great aunt? Uh, since I was uh, three months. And who who raised you along with your great aunt? Uh, your great aunt? My great uncle, or my aunt's husband. <laughs> okay. And um, how often? Uh, when did you uh, reconnect with your father? With uh, about middle school. About what age? Uh, 10, 11. Okay. And how often did you talk to Wardell um, from the time you were three months to when you were 10 to 11? Can you repeat that, please? How often did you talk to Wardell before you reconnected? Um, like once or twice. So that entire 11, 12 years, we only talked to him about once. Yes, sir. And, um, Have you suffered any problems from not talking to Wardell all those years? Um, I definitely was very curious about like as like who I was, where I came from. Um, I kind of had no idea until I started like reaching out and got to know him better. You know, would you say that your great aunt and your great uncle raised you well? They did, yes, sir. Um, and uh, you were uh, you were the victim in in the case that your father uh, was given probation, correct? Yes, sir. And uh, you said that you found out it was an accident? I found out it was an accident, but I also, my mom slipped up one time and said that she was actually the one that did it. And um, have you talked to Wardell about that case? Um, I have briefly about it. And are you aware that um, he, his probation was revoked in that case? He was sentenced to prison? Um, I'm not very aware of any of the legality of what happened with it. Um, 
And you said that your your family made it complicated to talk to Wardo. What do you mean by that? As uh, my my mom and dad were very, or my mom more so was just very overprotective, and she just felt that she wanted to be really in control. You know what I mean? She was so she she didn't want me to reach out to anyone else from my family besides the family that I was currently in. So she was acting as a mother. Would. She was, yes, ma'am. Um, nothing further, Your Honor. Pass the witness. Briefly, Your Honor. Yes. Did you, uh, at some point, did she, did you reach out on your own or did she allow you to reach out to the court? Um, I reached out on my own. Did she learn that you had reached out to him? Yes. Did she understand how important that relationship was for you? She did at that point, yes, sir. Um, you mentioned your mom and this allegation. Is it your understanding that your dad took responsibility to protect her? Uh, it was my understanding that it was pinned on him more than anything. From your mom's perspective? My biological mom. And um, he took responsibility even then? Yes, sir. Looking further down. Nothing based on that, Your Honor. All right, you may step down. Defense. Oh, the next witness, Your Honor, will be Sean Stevens. <coughs> All right, you'll take a seat here, please. Right, can you? I believe you've been sworn in before. Is that yes, correct? All right, you're still under oath. If you'll just state your name for the record, and you may have a seat. Sean Stevens. Defense. Thank you, Your Honor. Ms. Stevens, you're aware that uh, the jury has found Moriel guilty of this offense. I am. And uh, you've been made aware that the punishment range is two to 20 years on this case. I have. You've also been made aware that you be have to register as a sex offender for the rest of the life. Yes. Uh, can you tell me, based upon how you know Ordell and Amanda, how this would affect their life, their family's life, be sentenced for a long period of time? Um, his support of his family, the emotional toll that all of this is going to take, the uh, um, with loved ones, period, interactions with business after this. Um, it's just going to be devastating. We, we talked a little bit about uh, during the innocent phase about the what you observed specifically with Wardell and Madison. Tell me what you know about Wardell. What kind of person is he? Admirable. And why do you say that? Uh, the support that he's given me my daughters, my family, his own family, his boys. Can you give us an example of the support that he's given? I recently lost my dad. Um, prior to that, he'd had a stroke that had suffered for seven years. The emotional support, the friendship. Uh, I wouldn't trade it for the world. Has he been... Um, Kind of a pillar of strength for a lot of people. Absolutely. And in what way has he been that? Like the support, um, caring, genuine, uh, true to who he is, to the community, to to everybody that knows him. To the community, in what way? Tell us about that. <sighs> Just sorry. The people, everyone that's been around him. I mean, he's always there to be an ear, a hand, guidance, strength. I mean, anything, anything that you have ever could ever ask, he's there 110% for you. Have you seen him in his interactions with his with his children? I have. And uh, what kind of father have you seen him be be to his children, especially at their adult you know adult stage of their life? Guidance, pure pure guidance to raise men. Very proud father. 
and guiding them to who they're supposed to be, what they're supposed to become, helping them along the way, being upset like any father would be. If they're, you know, any type of issue has come up, but just being there, caring and knowing that anybody's going to fall and you bring them back up. And I've watched them do it with his boys. I'll pass it to State. Uh, yes. Uh, you know Wardell well? Very. And you said he is a very proud father. Yes. Do very proud fathers not talk to their sons from the age of three months old until the age of 11? I don't know anything prior to the last 10 years. Okay, but I just would like you to answer that question. Is that um, the nature of a proud father to not talk to their son from three months old to 11 years old? I, again, I don't know prior to 10 okay, years. That's, too -responsive. that's overruled. Um, so are you saying that you have, that um, someone who, a father who doesn't talk to their son from three months to 11 years old, is that a good father or a bad father? To me, it would depend on the circumstances. Okay. Again, I don't know prior to our friendship. Okay. Um, and do you respect the jury's verdict in this case? I do. Okay, and so you said yesterday that you would trust Wardell with your children, and now that he's been convicted of indecency with the child by contact, do you feel the same? Do you, would you still trust him with your children? I do. Okay, and you also respect the jury's verdict in this? I do. Okay, and did Wardell ever drink? He has. Okay, did Wardell ever use marijuana? Not to my knowledge. No further questions. Defense? Billy Carter. All right, thank you. Ready to step down? Defense? That's a restaurant. State? State rest and close. Defense, do you close? Rest and close, Your Honor. All right. Ladies uh, and gentlemen, are you all okay to stay later? All right. So what I'm going to have you do is step outside because there are a couple of matters that I need to take up. So I will have you brought back in at 315. All right, everyone, please rise to the jurors. Ladies and gentlemen and the jury, you received all the evidence that you're going to receive for this phase of the trial. I'm going to read to you the charge of the court on punishment. Uh, you don't have to memorize it. You will receive a copy of it. Charge of the court on punishment. Members of the jury, by your verdict returned in this case, you have found the defendant, Wardell Lemon, guilty of the offense of indecency with a child by sexual contact. It is necessary that the jury assess the punishment for this offense. You are instructed that the punishment for indecency with a child by sexual contact as charged in the indictment is confinement in the Texas Department of Criminal Justice Institutional Division for any term of not more than 20 years or less than two years. Therefore, you will assess the punishment of the defendant for a term of not more than 20 years or less than two years. In addition to imprisonment, an individual found guilty of the offense of indecency with a child by sexual contact may be punished by a fine not to exceed $10,000. And if you choose to assess a fine in addition to imprisonment, you will assess such fine and so state in your verdict. If you assess a fine, it is not paid to the victim or victims, if any, but is paid into the registry of the court. If there is any evidence before you that the defendant may have committed any offense or act of misconduct other than the offense of which you have convicted him, you are instructed that you may use that evidence, if any, in assessing punishment in this case, but only if you find from the evidence beyond a reasonable doubt that the defendant committed such other offense or act of misconduct, if any. In the event you have a reasonable doubt as to whether any other such offense or act of misconduct was committed, or as to whether the defendant was involved in such other offense or act of misconduct, then you will wholly disregard the evidence, if any, which may relate to any such matter. You are instructed that the defendant may testify in his own behalf if he chooses to do so. But if he elects not to do so, that fact cannot be taken by you as a circumstance against him, nor prejudice him in any way. The defendant has elected not to testify in this punishment phase of trial. And you are instructed that you cannot and must not refer or allude to that fact throughout your deliberations or take it into consideration for any purpose whatsoever. 
In your deliberations, you may consider evidence introduced during the guilt phase of the trial, as well as any evidence introduced at the punishment phase of the trial. On the instructions herein given, it will not be proper for you in determining the penalty to be assessed to fix the same by lot, chance, any system of averages, or any other method than by full, fair, and free exercise of the opinion of the individual jurors under the evidence submitted before you. The length of time for which the defendant is in prison may be reduced by the award of parole. Under the law applicable in this case, the defendant will not become eligible for parole until the actual time served equals one half of the sentence imposed. If the defendant is sentenced to a term of less than four years, the defendant must serve at least two years before the defendant is eligible for parole. Eligibility for parole does not guarantee that parole be, will be granted. It cannot be accurately predicted how the parole, parole law might be applied to this defendant because the application of that law will depend on decisions made by parole authorities. You may consider the existence of the parole law. You are not to consider the manner in which the parole law may be applied to this particular defendant. A suitable form is attached hereto for your verdict if you should care to use the same. However, such form is not intended to influence you in any way in arriving at your verdict. In any event, the verdict must be unanimous in writing and signed by your presiding juror. Respectfully submitted, Judge Stephanie Boyd, 187 District Court, and forms are attached. State, are you prepared to proceed? All right, defense. May I please court? Counsel. Ladies and gentlemen, as I told you during the opening of the punishment phase, we do respect your verdict. We understand you've come to this verdict based upon the consideration of the evidence. What we're asking you to do now is consider Ward L. Levin and the person he has been to his family and to his friends. We're asking you to consider taking away a man who has provided so much and has been not a perfect man, but has been responsible, taking care of those around him, help those to become upstanding men, help those friends that he had continue with their lives and deal with issues around them, help those who have their own children deal with whatever issues that come before them. You're going to read through this and you've probably heard and you're like, well, there's an issue of parole. It tells you what the parole law is, but that's not really for you to consider. There is a parole law. Whether or not he gets out at a certain time is not for you to determine. It'll be for another entity to make a decision. What we also want you to consider is that you heard from the testimony, he's going to be labeled and have to register as a sex offender for the rest of his life. So at some point when he does get out, he's going to have to register. So that means he is going to have to be confined, even though he is not in prison anymore. That is a lifetime registration. That is something that he's going to have to deal with and live with based upon your verdict, and he understands that. So whatever you decide as far as the punishment, he's still being punished long after that curse. We understand that this is a serious offense, and we understand the circumstances surrounding it. But a couple things I also want you to think about is the fact that this family is still trying to drive more nails into that coffin, going through and trying to provide more evidence as to rebuttal as to what was testified during guilt and innocence. Try to make it clear that she ne- my mom never reached out to me. She's not, she's unblocked. All these little things try to manipulate your feelings as to how you should view Ward L. Lemon and Amanda Lewis. All those things that show you who they are. So we understand you've come to the verdict that you have come to. We're respectfully asking you to come to a decision to sentence Ward L. to two years in the Institutional Division, Division of the Criminal Justice. And if not two years, then the lower end of the punishment range. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Right, state. Ladies and gentlemen, as you've heard, the defendant is facing two to 20 years in the prison because of this charge. 
And if you've paid attention, you've seen him shed tears while at that table today. Stay with Smithy that he's not crying there because of what he did, because of what he caused in that. He's crying there because he's now facing the consequences of his actions almost 10 years later. Now, Madison got up on the stand and told you she thought of him as a father up until this incident happened. And the defendant took advantage of Madison at that young age and broke the trust that she had in the man that she saw as a father. He groomed her. You heard testimony yesterday about that. He took advantage of her little by little, making her comfortable with what he was doing to her because she didn't know at that time that it was wrong. He knew it was wrong. And he took it step by step by step to try and protect himself in making sure he never got caught and end up in this situation today. The defendant wants, or the defense wants you to take him into account in this punishment phase. But what about the victim? The defendant caused all of this damage. Sure, he's going to be a sex offender, and rightfully so. He's charged with indecent contact to a child. So yes, he will be a sex offender because of his own actions, not by anything that Madison caused. She is the victim. She's the complainant in this case. She has nothing to do with what is now going to happen to the defendant. Um, you've heard a little bit of information about how he's now a two-time felon. He was given a chance previously in a case where he injured his own child. And that was revoked because he couldn't abide by the rules set by the court. And he was sentenced to six months. So he's already shown that any punishment is, is, is not enough for him. Because if he's given a chance, he will take advantage of it just the way that he took advantage of Madison. You also heard from, from Shauna again, who yesterday, if you'll remember, testified that she, she, she would trust Wardell with her kids. And even now, as he sits here, a convicted felon of a sexual charge against a child, she's, she's telling you to your face that she would still trust him. I don't know what that says about the defendant. I don't know what that says about her. But you can take that into account. You heard from his son, and they made it seem as though the defendant is this big, important figure in his life and shaping him into who he is today. Caleb was raised by his great aunt and his great uncle. He testified to you that he doesn't suffer any problems from not having seen Wardell for the first 10 plus years of his life. So it's the defense who's trying to manipulate your emotions into taking that background information into the back with you. It's up to y'all in the jury to send a message that this type of crime is not taken lightly in our community. So when you go into the back, again, think about Madison. Think about how this is going to affect her. Something that was not caused by her, but by the defendant's actions, and how that's going to affect her for the rest of her life. Think about how every time she thinks about this action, she's going to think about the relationship with the mom that she never wanted to lose, but was forced to let go of because of the defendant's actions, because she chose this defendant over her own daughter. Now, the complainant, Madison, has <laughs> had this hanging over her head for the last 10 years and found the, the, the braveness inside her to finally come out one day and tell her story about what happened. And like you said, like counsel said to you previously, you can consider the existence of parole, but you can't consider it to how it directly will affect the defendant's sentence. But we think that because she has been suffering with this for 10 years, close to 10 years, we feel that the maximum sentence of 20 years in this case is more than we are. Thank you. All right, ladies and gentlemen, uh, you will be sent to the back. Uh, again, Estrada and Pettis, if you'll remain behind. All right, everyone, please rise for the jurors. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, it's the court's understanding that you 
preach the burden as to punishment. Is that correct? Yes, ma'am. And is it unanimous? Yes, ma'am. All right. We'll pass it to you. Thank you. Uh, the punishment verdict form reads that the punishment is assessed at confinement and the institutional division of the Texas Department of Criminal Justice for the term of 10 years. And there is a fine of $5,500. You may be seated. Would anyone wish to pull the jury? Yes, Your Honor. All right, ladies and gentlemen, uh, we're going to start on this end. And I'm going to ask whether or not this is your verdict. I do note that we have the two alternates in the jury box, but so that the record is clear, the alternates did not participate in deliberation or guilty, not guilty phase of the trial or in punishment phase. Is that correct, everyone? Yes. So this question just for the persons who um, are not the alternates. So we'll start on this end. Is this your verdict? Is this your verdict? Yes, ma'am. Is this your verdict? Yes, ma'am. Is this your verdict? Is this your verdict? Yes, ma'am. Is this your verdict? Yes, ma'am. We'll start with that row. Is this your verdict? Yes, ma'am. 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 Is this your verdict? Is this your verdict? Yes, ma'am. Right. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you so much for your service. Uh, Deputy Laura is going to have you go back to the jury room and do not come back and speak with you. And the alternates may go with you as well. All right, everyone. All right, everyone, please be seated. All right, Mr. Lemon. Yes, ma'am. The jury has assessed your punishment at 10 years in the prison. You'll receive credit for any time served, and there's to be a fine of $5,500. Does that time served include the ankle monitor? No, it does not include the ankle monitor. It includes any time that you've actually been in custody. And there's to be chapter 62 registration. Uh, is there anything else with regards to sentencing from either side? State? State? Defense? No, Your Honor. All right, Mr. Lemon, I'm going to show you what's entitled trial court certification of defendant's rights to appeal. Did you review that with your attorney? Did you understand it? Um, I didn't really read over it. All right. Would you like a chance to read over it? All right. <laughs> All right, Mr. Lemon, have you had a chance to review the trial court certification of defendants' rights to appeal with your attorney? Yes, ma'am. Uh, do you understand it? Yes. All right. So because this was a jury trial, you do have a right to an appeal. If you are unable to afford an appellate attorney, uh, your attorney knows to file the proper uh, motions and the proper documents as far as notice of appeal, and then an attorney will be appointed to represent you on appeal. Do you understand? Yes, sir. All right. Do you have any questions about anything? Um, I do. Uh, With regards to the sentence, oh. if, if you have questions about the legal implications or the reason the jury decided what no, they decided. Nothing like that. I mean. Uh, Mr. Gonzalez. Yeah. Yes. I think it's for her. <laughs> like I have a bunch of bills and stuff that are coming out of credit cards and stuff like that. Is there any way I can get to that or as far as do you mean calling 
someone or something to take care of that? We'll talk to him about how he can handle that, Judge. All right. All right. So, you, as I stated before, you do have a right to an appeal because this was a jury trial. Uh, because this is a felony conviction, you're not allowed to own or possess any weapons or ammunition. If you have a question over what a weapon or ammunition is, you'll need to speak to your attorney. Do you understand? And with regard, we're off the record, with regards to any bills that are coming out of an account that you may have, I don't know. That may be something that you can handle by phone, but I don't know how the phone call will work at the jail because I know at the jail, yeah, those phone calls cost. Computers, but... Yes. So you may want to, um, your attorney said they'll speak to you about that. Right. All right. Is there anything else? All right. Thank you. Can I talk to you? Yeah, just... 